Hello everyone and welcome back. We're here with another Throwback Thursday. Got the skeleton crew coming around. Me and Steven have been together. This is, we're closing down the end of week 10 of Isolation Streams. If you haven't been joining us every Thursday, we have been doing Throwback Thursday where we revisit some of our old favorite games from the past 20 or 30 years and even some games we've been looking to get on the table for the first time. Like Middle Earth CCG fits that category for me. Today we are revisiting I think this is the first game we're revisiting from the 2000 teens, is what I'll call it, which is 2014's Conquest LCG, also known as the Warhammer 40,000 Conquest LCG, designed by Eric Lang, who de designed a lot of games that we were into in the past decade. I started out, out with the Game of Thrones LCG that we got into for a long time. He was the hired assassin for FFG for a yeah, long time. Yeah, they like time. contracted out game yeah. design with him, and they had the developers in house. So he would design the system and maybe the the core set and a, a couple expansions, and he would pass that off to an in house house developer. And they would also work with him on that and whatnot. I think Brad Andres as well, as an example, uh, did a lot of development for this, this game. This is his, his baby, I think. I think this was his first game to really cut his teeth on um, in that role as passing off from Eric. But Eric also designed Star Wars LCG, um, and he's designed. He's now the head of design at Simon. Mm -hmm. Cool mini or not. That's right. Um, and a lot of super popular Got his board trilogy games. going. Onk. Got Blood Rage. Uh, the other one, uh, <laughs> Rising Sun. That's part of that trilogy? I, I, e, e, don't quote me on that. I think that's a separate... Anyways, short version is he's a, a game... Definitely like a modern game design. He's one of the biggest names in game design. That's easily. right. And uh, one of the nicest and most enjoyable people to speak to. He's great. We did an interview with him at Gen yeah. Con, uh, yeah. talking about Ankh and all kinds of other stuff. So, Love Eric. All that said, Conquest LCG, uh, if, if you're unfamiliar with the history of this, I uh, also want to shout out before I dive into a little bit of history, uh, Ryan Graham, former employee and former huge, huge fan, I guess current huge fan of the Conquest LCG. Current friend. Current friend, ongoing <laughs> friend, uh, lent us his collection of cards. None of us had them except him. That's how uh, into this game he was. So we have, it looks like, nine decks here uh, that we're going to be playing through. And they're just built exactly as he built them. Even this one, which is fun, if you want to give me the overhead shot, uh, has this awesome Inigo, oh, that's me. In Inigo Montoya sleeve, <laughs> which is great. That's how you know you're into someone's personal collection. Uh, so shout out to Ryan for letting us borrow these and get this great game on stream. Yes, thank uh, you, A little you, bit Ryan. of history. This game came out. It was licensed by Fantasy Flight Games, the 40K IP universe card game, etc., designed by Eric Lang. Uh, and it was only around for a couple of years. This is actually sad. It is very sad. This so is a sad one. I believe it was uh, late 2015, I, I don't know this timeline exactly, that Asmodee acquired FFG or the merger or however that happened. Capital um, M. And so then Asmodee is a much uh, bigger institution than Fantasy Flight was, who had the license. And then you have GW, who's another huge uh, just entity in tabletop gaming. And so there were some licensing conflicts, and that ended up not resolving well. So the game kind of just mid-stride uh, got cannonballed. Well, it's worth noting, too, as we've discussed before, I think on many podcasts, even at the time, were we recording the podcast at the time that Conquest was live? We weren't, were the we? The Covenant cast? Yeah. No. Okay. But it has been a point of reflection many times as to this is one of those games that just couldn't get out from under the production woes that it had. Um, particularly early on where I think, as I remember, the core set came out and then it was like seven years until the first <laughs> cycle started. Yeah, I think, I think it was the core set came out in like the fall, like, like normal. So it was announced yeah. at Gen Con and then it actually came out in like October, November. And then I want to say the first pack didn't hit till like February or March. It was a. Uh, I remember just waiting and waiting. Yeah. Waiting. And then it it had the classic. Uh, I say classic. I mean classic competitive LCG issue, which is I think the first two or three uh, cycles. Uh, there was just kind of a. I, I've seen it over and over where there's just like this. This it happened with Thrones 2.0 as well, where it's like you kind of start off in a really a, a good spot. Because there's the game design, and, and that's why we love this game. The mechanics of the game are incredible. Like the, the way it's structured, the the pressure it's putting on you, the way you use the resources is a very unique situation. And I think it brings a kind of area of control element to a card game that you don't often see. Like the, the design of the system is yeah, phenomenal. The, I have, in fact, I you, you can quote me on this. All because right, it's on video, it's so we on can video and quote it's it. already on audio. Probably every, one, every time somebody says, what's a game that you wish would come back? Or like, what's something that you wish would be done in terms of game design? It's always the Conquest system plus something. Yeah. It's like Conquest system in Lord of the Rings, Conquest system in Game of Thrones, Conquest system in L5R. It doesn't matter what it is. If there's locations and things fighting, 
conquest system. And makes a lot of sense. I, I totally agree. The I, Warlord. I, this is a system that I really wish would come back. You you have a character starting because back then, right? We we were used to. We were in the lens of like games we were playing then were like Lord of the Rings LCG, the uh, Game of Thrones LCG. So like Game of Thrones, right? You don't start with Daenerys on the table or Jon Snow. Right. You have to just draw them. So this was like, oh my goodness, I get Zarathur, High Sorcerer, <laughs> from the, the beginning. That's right. And I think the other thing it did is it, kind of the more I learn, right, even about 40K, is that like 40K is a miniatures game. So it's this big, expansive thing happening across the table. And so much of it is about positioning and where you're putting your units and what you're, you know, which units you're putting with what other units and where. And so like it did that in a card game in a way that I had not seen before. And, and that's really I- impressive. But yeah. Licensing issue happens. It also it had the classic LCD problem. The development was essentially what's the Clivex something something. The Clivex purple guy. Leader is a good example. I, yeah. I called it the purple haze because it was just like <laughs> a purple card hits the table and I lose. Uh, but there were some <laughs> fundamentals about the game, and we we talk about this a lot on the podcast where it's like a game identifying what the principles are that it doesn't ever break. Mm-hmm. Right? What are the design core design principles? And so it, not only did we have a product delay, I think there was also a delay. After, because again, it was it was a. I actually remember this. Right. This no, is it. No, I, 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 I have it. drama. I, there's it, it trauma me. there. So I don't the, remember the timing how it of it out. is because 2015 was quite a year for me across the board. Yeah, and it's I good remember, year for Zach. Yeah, good in the end result, not <laughs> in the experience. Uh, but the the thing about 2015 because the merger with Asmodee was happening, and so the from like August to December of that year, there were no LCG releases. So oh, yeah. Conquest didn't have any, Netrunner didn't that, have any. Yeah, I remember it was us just freaking like, out about that. There was just no new stuff coming out, which as people who were focused on these games, like, uh, was just like devastating as a, as a local store, our communities, and uh, our online community and whatnot. So <laughs> it had the, the delay up front, and then the balance issues up front. That first cycle just kind of like broke some things. Yeah. And it was like it was very slanted. And then you were in that zone going into a five-month period with no more product. And during that period, you have the first world championship. And it's like, and it's just a mess, Mm -hmm. right? And so it had a lot of issues. But then just as it felt like it was coming, because we got the second cycle, stuff was coming out. Brad was really excited. Brad was was It's like, yeah, I get it. Like, big units aren't relevant. Let's make them relevant with this cycle kind of thing. Then the licensing stuff comes down. Yeah. Game over. Yeah. End of of the story. So it's really this, like, nugget of a game. It's also also another, I would say it's another example of um, too many factions. I mean, if you're going to do a the LCG model where you get one pack every month and you're trying to give people new content every month for the yeah. faction that they play, there's no way to do that with seven, eight, nine I mean, factions. Can you imagine? Uh, we, we talk about this all Factionless the time. Factionless LCG? Well, yes. Could but work. Can, can you imagine if the first thing that came out was not a core set, but it was four independent standalone decks? Mm-hmm. And it's like, this is the Chaos deck, this is the Space Marine deck, this is the Orc deck, etc. And then it was like, once a month you just get a new deck. So even if you're just mm-hmm. a faction, it's like, here's the new character with all the new stuff. Um, it's a way to do it. And you just make it super accessible. And this, it also had the old school, I mean, so many learning from the LCG model. Uh, it had the, you need three core sets to have a play set. Yeah. So it's like, you want to pay $120 to get in? And then... Everybody loved that. You wait five months, you finally get a pack, it's 15 <laughs> bucks, and if you, I, was, I was basically only playing Chaos. It's like, all right, here's your two cards. Yeah. Well, yeah. What? No, you can't do it. The, 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 that's the problem. I think the system... And the entire idea of the game was a mismatch for the format that it came out under. There's a, there's a way to do LCGs. Now, the, the cooperative, we've seen how it works because it's story-driven, there's scenarios, it makes sense to get that monthly injection, and it, everybody wants the new thing to play against, the new story, right? Yeah. But when you have a competitive LCG with a ton of different factions, I think that's just a huge problem with how you can keep a game expanding with so little new material coming out every month. I just don't think it's, it's really feasible. Yeah, and I think if you wanted to do it here, what I would do is I would only have like four factions. Yeah. Like just hone it in, and it's like once every four months your faction gets a whole stack of cards. And it's a bummer because for 40K you can't really do that because there's yeah. just so much in each faction that is like critical to their identity. So. I don't know. I don't know if it's just let's make it a make it a big box once every six months or something or what. But yeah. Also, people comment on this. It's worth. This is a notable part of the history um, where a little, little bit of an inside joke comes from. <laughs> uh, someone asking uh, it didn't help that at one of the big first major events there was a uh, someone that cheated, caught on camera. It was so uh, great. So it was Jen. Con- I interviewed the, that person the, afterwards. The first it's national championship. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was a really tough final round. Yeah. Essentially, <laughs> what what happened just for context, and we it was it just happened to be we got on camera right 
which is uh, when you're drawing, it was like he was basically drawing extra cards. Yeah. Um, and cards are very, uh, in every card game, they're valuable. But in this game particularly, because of the way the like shielding mechanic works, super, super important. Um, so he, it, and that happened, but then to make matters worse beyond just getting caught cheating, it was, and it was after the fact, right? Take the trophy home, get the interviews, post the pictures, everyone's... It was a while started. after, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing about it was there was like a forum happening. Yes. Uh, and there was a post on like Card Game DB, I think it was. Or essentially, somewhere. you know, he's basically like, it wasn't intentional, I was accidentally drawing too many, etc. But then like there's a response from someone else who's like defending him several times. And then at some point... That person defending him posts, but it sounds like he's posting. Yeah. So yeah. then he posts a different response to that and says, this is from him. <laughs> yeah. uh, which is basically him. The <laughs> assumption is that it was him with both accounts, and he had an account to defend himself he, that he, looked like it was a third party. He basically made an alt account, was posting a defense of himself with that alt account, and then posted a response as himself from that alt account on accident. And then tried to spin it as, no, this is what he told me essentially in person. What I had said was from him. And so the yeah. comment was, this is from him. So then people started <laughs> saying, this is from like, him as a joke. It's just an unfortunate anarchy. situation. I mean, I think when you have competitive games, the craziness is like, uh, you know, it's, uh, we, and we talked about this at the time extensively. That's but, so funny. <laughs> uh, effectively, it's, it's unfortunate someone would do that. And like, there's really, it's just crazy because there's just nothing, nothing on the line even. It's not even like a like, I can kind of try to tr understand it was like this big, there's a million dollars on the line, you're yeah. gonna feed your family, like, eh, maybe. Yeah. But yeah. like, just and then don't worse than that is you can pull it off. immediately not just owning it. And yeah. then being like, yeah, I did it. I just got caught up in the moment, et cetera. Please forgive me. And it was just, it was a weird, bizarre moment. And that was the first national championship for the game, uh, which I think this game had had the goods mechanically to be a very competitive game. Yeah. Um, it, the the people that wanted to take it competitively could certainly like you can mitigate your luck enough in this game that it is that kind of game and it go, plays fast enough. It's that kind of game, so it's just unfortunate. Don't forget Jeremy Zwern. Oh yes. Yeah. D he won the Zwernator first. Uh, was the first one on this one. Um, first world championship. Yes. And then, man, there was one other. I apologize so much for forgetting the name. You guys will know. There's one other super high level player, and him and Zwern were playing, I believe, in a finals. And I remember that game being so intense. And so every shield that you were considering was a five minute decision. And these were two. It was like Brady. It wasn't Brady. What was what was his name? You guys. Refresh my memory, please, on who this was. Da Davis? Davis sounds right? Let, let Davis me know. Kingsley. Davis Kingsley. Thank you. It was yep. Davis, yeah. So Davis is awesome. Uh, Jeremy's awesome. They're both on the final table. I'm watching the game. I think we're recording it for was it, at the was time. Wasn't Robert doing like live commentary? He may have been doing live commentary. Yeah, yeah. at FFG World. And it was just like, this is so awesome. Just peak conquest, right? It was so amazing to see. And then at the very end, and they were both playing, I think, Clavix War Leader and that kind of stuff because that was where it was at the time. But I was like, man, this, this is just phenomenal. I love that this game experience can be created with this system. Uh, and then shortly, you know, after, things kind of went downhill. Yeah, and that's the, so that was, I think, the third world championship I had witnessed Jeremy win, uh, yeah. which is when I knew he had the goods. And then when he got put on Destiny, I was really excited because yeah. he gets it. He's a spreadsheet. So I'm, I'm excited to see what he is working on next, honestly. All right, so Zach knows the rules, so he's going to refresh <laughs> my memory on them. Uh, I played a good deal of Conquest early, Hold and then on, it kind of got a little me, awkward. I need for to me. see one of these to show people what's going on. Uh, so these are called planets. Let's get in there. This is called Karnath, and you'll see a few things on the planet that are worth going. And I, when I'm teaching a game, I always talk about a win condition. And I literally, my relearning of this, I played it back in the day, and then I watched one video. Uh, and Steven played it as much, if not more. Well, I'm sure we'll be fine. He, he was quoting it uh, to me, the rules, this morning, so I think he's fine. Uh, but effectively, the way this works is you'll see these icons here, and they each have a, they're called something, like the red is a certain kind. It's like tactics and yeah. supply and that so kind of stuff. So there's red, blue, and green, and so you win the game by collecting uh, three of the same icon on the planets. And so there's planets that have one icon, planets that have two, uh, planets that also have all three, and they never have two of the same one on them. And so if you win that planet, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, you actually put it in your collection, you know, over here. You control that planet. And once you have three of the same icon over here, you win the game. That's right. So the other thing that's relevant is these planets are going to be positioned, and they're gonna, the order is going to matter. And so whoever's first player, like this will be our first player token. Uh, so if, if I'm the first player of the game, we'll start on this planet as planet one, and that'll be one, two, three, four, five. And there's technically seven total planets. The last two won't be revealed. Once this planet goes away, we'll reveal the next planet. 
And so what's going to happen is uh, we're going to alternate taking turns playing uh, units, basically, and we have to choose which planet they go to. Right, they deploy to a yep. specific location. And then eventually what will happen is the conflicts will happen on the planet. We'll walk all through this all when we're actually playing. Uh, but essentially, the first planet, there's always a fight. And if there's no units there, the planet's just going to disappear. But uh, there's a fight. Whoever wins that fight is going to actually take control of that planet. And then these are going to slide down, and we're going to get a new planet. And you resolve the battle ability after you win it. Yep, and they all have unique abilities. You also, if you look, uh, these icons on the bottom, uh, the bottom left one, it looks like the back of a card. So if you have control of that they call planet. call that control or command. I can't remember. I think it's, it's I think one command. It's what those icons are on the characters. Like, I'm going to The pull little hammer icons. Up. Like, I have yeah. the Noise Marines Warband. And you'll see the hammer icon on them. That's their, con their command value. And so whoever has more of those at a planet actually... Wins, wins control of it and, or command of it. So then you'll get these things. So like, uh, you know, this uh, Osis 4, you draw zero cards and you get two resources yeah. is how that would work. This is also one of, this is a, there's an interesting uh, question about design. This is one of those games that is a long-term tactical game and you will find that if you do poorly early on, you will do even more poorly later. Uh, so it's not. I wouldn't say like it's a snowbally game, even because that term is used in a in like negative ways. This is a game of incremental advantage over time. And so if you continually are losing those incremental battles, then by the time you get to something you really care about, there's probably no way to win it. Um, so it's very much about like making sure everything is going well for you throughout the entire game. And both players generally can get trades favorable to them. And so by the time that it really matters, you have a lot of times you have that last planet giant pile up and then a giant battle occurs. Yep. Which I don't know if that was intended, but it kind of is a cool way to handle 40k, honestly. Sure. And I think if you look at a few things here, again, the battle always happens on the first planet, and then it's also going to happen at any planet with our commanders. Mm. So warlords. wherever we send our warlords, uh, there's going to be a fight that happens there. Also, if you're the only player with a ready warlord at a planet, you automatically win control of it to get the resources and cards. Yeah. Um, and one of the coolest mechanics is that there's a phase where you actually set a dial from one to five, and you both this do that. This game's great. Yeah. Man. At the same time, and then you reveal, and that's where your warlord goes. So there's a little bit of a like, who's going to go where mechanic. Uh, but even just looking at the, the sprawl of these planets, right? Uh, it looks like we have uh, Irid Dial. Is the first planet, yeah, uh, and we will f randomize these. But Karnath, Osis four. So you can see the first way to win is actually collecting all three of those as green. Did you take Roman numerals in high school or something? I didn't know you knew Roman numerals that well. That's a <laughs> the the thing before the V subtracts from the five. Yeah, yeah. All right. Do you guys know? I are you, at, what's, what's happening? No, seriously. No, I, I really, a lot of people <laughs> I, I don't know that that's with four. Me. No, yeah, that's, yeah. that's good. Uh, four. So, I did it in Academic Bowl, and I'm always impressed when people can read well, Roman I numerals. I also was in Academic <laughs> Bowl. Uh, so, Barless. We were there at the same time. Yeah, we were there together. Uh, so, if you look, though, it's like green. There's no green on the second one, but there are green on all three of these. So, if either of us wins three of these four planets, we win the game. Uh, then the next win condition is not even on the board, because blue... Oh, wait, there it is. Blue, blue, and then blue. So if you win these three particularly. But if you go for the reds, there's two mm. reds. There's not even another red yet. So you're going to be playing a little bit longer of a game. Um, and it, one of the cool things about the game is it, it made the early turns feel as important as the late turns. Yeah. Even though the late turns get bigger, uh, the early turns actually create a tempo. Like, you can actually get the tempo early, and it gives you such an advantage because it keeps kind of rolling along. And then you got to defend against your opponent's win condition while trying to get your own. It's so good. All right, you ready to shuffle up and do this? I'm ready, yeah. I'm all right, ready. So, so also worth noting, so these are all Ryan's decks. I think these are probably, you know, a snapshot of whatever competitive meta was going on at the time. So these will be... Which I think is the end of the game. ...pretty standard uh, decks that you would have seen at a tournament or whatever. There's actually a lot of incredibly cool, like, warlords and cards in this game that just never got to see play because they were under the curve, as it were. Uh, but you can have so much fun if you actually start taking some ownership of cards that you want to see or don't want to see, like a little restricted list or a little mm -hmm. house ban list kind of thing. Game can get really fascinating. Like Kotiaz, I think, was one of the one of the these uh, guys, these warlords. I remember trying to make that guy work for forever. And I kind of did it. B plus. B, B plus indeed. All right, you have the other planets somewhere. There they yeah, they're right here. I'm going to shuffle these up. All right. We're going to And these were them. old world's prizes, I think, that uh, Ryan got? Apparently it was from the world? last world championship, yeah. Can you imagine? The last one was 2016. 
that seems like in my when I say it out loud, that seems recent, but it's actually four years ago. It is. It's a long time ago. <laughs> All right, so basically, me a second there. I'm going to lay seven out, and they're going to stay face down for a second. So those are the seven planets, and we don't know what they are. And so then we're going to flip on a one. I'll be the first player. On the th three, you'll be the first player. All right, sounds good. It's a one. It's a one. You're so first. starting on my left, I get the first player token. These are going to slide out of the way. They're going to stay there. But essentially, these are our starting planets. So we get to see these. So the first planet is Iridial. What's the, what's the battle ability on that? And you remove all damage from a target unit if you win the battle there. Then we've got, uh, what, Taurus? Uh, if you control fewer units than your opponent, gain three resources or draw three cards. This is a big one. I remember this one being really important because it was a catch-up mechanic. Three though. resources and three cards is a lot. Yeah. Uh, then this uh, next one is Yavarn. Each player puts a unit into play from his or her hand at his HQ. That's good if you're running big stuff was not super common. Uh, Osis 4, thank you, Zach. Take mm. one resource from your opponent, mm. if you win that one. That's Always a, like a that, boy. Uh, and then we have Route, a target non-warlord at Farron. I remember Farron being pretty cool. We've got red, red, red. So you win the first three, you win green, green, green. Green's you win on the all first four, three, you win. and red's on this one. Blue, blue, nothing. So blue planets aren't going to matter too much. Wow, this is really good for me, too, because I think this guy's all about green planets. Broderick War is my warlord. So let's look at him real quick. Yep. So Broderick War, I remember he was good. I didn't like him, but I know that he was really good. Um, so he's a soldier. He's a commissar. Imperial Guard, is that right, guys? Imperial Guard? That sounds right. That sounds That's right. how I remember it. I, I wasn't a 40K player, so excuse me for all of the 40K fans out there that we're going to get some stuff wrong. Um, army units that retreat from this planet are destroyed instead. So if you retreat, you're dead. Because it's like, yeah, why are you running? You're, you should be scared of me, not the enemy. And then each other Imperial Guard unit you control at a green planet gets plus one attack and gains cannot retreat or be routed. Wow. So all four of these first planets, you're, if you're with your commander, you get plus one. That's right. Seems good. That's really good. And I, uh, you also notice a few stats there. The two is your attack value. The six is the uh, health. So once he takes yeah. six... Warlords have a bloodied side, so they retreat and flip and retreat. There's this area back here called your HQ. That's where you put like resources and supports. That's also where units go when they retreat or things that go you know back get routed. They go to your HQ, uh, and usually they like lose their ability. You can see he's bloodied. He doesn't have his card text anymore, and he's got lower health. If either of us actually defeats the other warlord, they lose the game. Another right? great part of this game. Yeah, actually. so you can lose on planets and you can also lose on assassination, which is good. I think that's a good balance to have. I love it. I love it. Because uh, I've definitely, I, I've had wow. games where you're ahead on planets and then they just come and snipe your warlord and then you have a problem because you send your bloody warlord somewhere, they could just... Then you got to hide yeah. the whole game. It's, you know, this was great, actually. You know, it's funny to actually, to look at this in a retrospective that has included so many old games, you start to realize, like, man, there is a lot of improvements, that actually, over yeah. uh, some of those older games we've been playing. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm playing Zarathur, High Sorcerer. He's a Psyker and his Inch. Uh, he has an interrupt when damage is assigned him. to an enemy unit at this planet. He's from the core set. When it, double it. You increase that damage by one. So it's not double. Double would be insane. Uh, but yeah, if I do two damage, then I get to increase it to three, etc. He's right. only got a one attack, so he does a lot of damage from events in hand in his units. And he's got six health. You also notice on the bottom, uh, I think yours is probably the same, is I have seven and seven. Yeah. So that represents uh, your starting hand size. Mm, nice. Yep, and I, I'm the second seven. What is the second seven? Maybe it's to tell you what your bloodied side has as well. It looks like a bloody seven, doesn't it? Hold on. Do you have anatomy of a card up? That's where I'm going. Man, you got one of those old school FFG rule books, yeah. man. Was this pre-learn to play days or is this post-learn to play? I think it's pre. So this was just one book that was like the rule book? Yeah. And it's not telling Starting me. resources. Ah, uh, there it is. Yeah. All right, so we're going to be using... We don't have, unfortunately, we used to make tokens for this, but I don't have I couldn't them. find them at all. Ryan, I know you have some, yeah, but... Yeah, he, um... he just failed. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. He actually apologized for not sending You them. didn't include everything. Uh, included so these are going to be my days. resources. This is our uh, uh, Keyforge compatible tokens, technically. Uh, amber being used. We also have damage tokens, which will just be damage tokens, so that'll be easy enough. Man, I uh, I loved those uh, war tokens. Those war tokens that yeah. we did, yeah. The reskinned ones. 
Here's the infest tokens that we did for this. Yeah, they're gross. Those are super gross. I never, whenever the the Zerg people came out, I wasn't the termagants and whatnot. I wasn't playing at that time. I think that and the who were the weird robot undead robots, which is just insane, right? That as a concept, how is that even? But uh, what do you you? We know what these are. Hold on, give me a second. Let me stare at the symbol for a second. Ah, I remember this. Hold on. Necromancy? Necrons. That's what I needed. Thank you. All right, do we have everything we need? Do you think we, we're ready? I think we're ready. So Let's I'm going to go into draw this, seven. Tyranid, yes, thank you. Tyranids I, and Necrons. I don't, I don't remember the uh, mulligan rule, but I'm sure it exists. Let's just do it like Arkham. The best mulligan rule? Here's another issue with this one. So every warlord brought in signature cards. So this was kind yeah. of in the experimental phase of like the Star Wars LCG was you would bring in the objectives and they'd build your deck. Uh, this one is like you, you choose a warlord and it brings signature cards. We then saw Arkham did choose a warlord, warlord in the sense of an investigator, get like one or two signature cards and then a weakness. Um, so basically tying certain cards in your deck to the main persona that you play started to become a, a thing that was happening around this time. The problem is the balance and the randomness of some of these signature cards that you get with a particular warlord are super good. Like there's a one of, uh, usually like one of item that comes along with your signature pool. So if your opponent draws into their signature item and that makes their warlord awesome or their game awesome and you don't see yours, uh, you are at a disadvantage. I mean, that's just the, the raw reality of it for most people. I think even like the Nurgle guy, the, the death plague father, I think he was like, if he gets the banner, it's like game over. Otherwise, it's fine. And like, I remember back in the day, a lot of people were making the case that like, oh, it's balanced because like you, it's only one card in your deck. So like you only occasionally get it. Ran randomizing balance is insanity. Because yeah. what it means is that Some in the, the game, time. I get my crazy thing, I win. In the game, you get your crazy thing, you win. Then in the games where neither of us get it or we both get it, it's the game, game is fair. Yeah. But it's like you're still creating <laughs> half of the games that are just busted for, for no reason. What up, Scott? Scott from the First Planet Podcast. I think I, I remember that one being the, one of the more, if not the, uh, the best By ones. the way, the mulligan is the Netrunner mulligan. Pitch the whole hand, shuffle it back in, draw back up. Cool. Okay, and we're drawing seven, right? Eight, four, five, six. According seven. to our stat lines, you bet yeah. Okay, and I've got seven to spend. I'm going to mulligan. Bold. So basically, the things I'm looking for are the supports that like cost one and they reduce. It's the pay one, reduce by one every round. Because basically, past turn two, they're oh, just kind of yeah, worthless. Yeah, yeah. I also want, if possible, to get a couple lower cost units with command icons, because winning command to get resources and cards is actually very critical. Um, I'll, I'll take this. It's fine. He's keeping it. Sure. Bad signs abound. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know yet. It helps that uh, Zarthur is the, the one I played the most back in the good Yeah, I remember days. that too, Elliot. That Chimera Den. Oh my gosh, that thing was busted. That's what, if you, if we could just take this system, and I'll bet you, you know what? If you take the system and you give it to like Brad again, for instance, start it at level zero with the core set, I bet uh, it's just so much better. At that point, it gets so much better because a lot of it was just just card balance was a little wonky. Yeah, I think because the system the system itself is fantastic. The system is super solid. I think we could take this. Give honestly, if you gave us a week with this, and you apply some theme like Thrones or Lord of the Rings or insert anything here, generic. Give us a live chat. Uh, I I think we could get it done. Yeah, Tobin, did I see Tobin on here? Ryan, are you talking? Is Tobin on here? I haven't seen Tobin in uh, way too long. This would be great for Star Wars. It would work. I mean, it, how close is this to the CCG, honestly? Yeah, I mean, you have the planets. In the middle. You have all your units with your main characters, like yeah. Vader, Luke, or whoever. Yeah. <sighs> now, if they could just move, you know, between... They have to get in a starship and get transport. And well, I mean, that. I think that's what's represented by them, like, coming here and going back to... Mm -hmm. Like, you're not you're trying to simulate the movement. And they only retreat if they fought a battle with your warlord? So the way the, way the battles work is... You basically go back and forth, exhausting the units to do their damage. Mm -hmm. And then once everything exhausted, they already. The first player gets a chance to retreat units. Yeah. Second player gets a chance, and if there's anything left, fight keeps going. Yeah. Until right there, it's total carnage. Right yeah, I got you. Yeah, that makes sense. And last man standing wins the planet. 
All right, all right. Tobin, you are there. What's that mean? Well. All right, so now we get to go, and you're the first we, player. I'm so the you get first the first player. deployment. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is where the game is really fascinating, because you've got to consider, what's my win how am I, where am I going to put my units to win planets to win me the game? How am I also going to commit command where I need resources and or cards so that I can win the long-term game of card advantage and resource advantage? And then what kind of tricks do I have in my hand that are going to surprise my opponent? And where am I going to put my Warlord? Also worth one fundamental part of this game that I don't think we, we covered. If you pull up Staff of Change, um, you'll see a little bar with a skull next to it right under the cost. There's a one cost attachment, and you'll see the skull. That's the number of shields that card generates. Oh, yeah. So when one of, one of my units is taking damage, you can actually discard one card and then cancel damage equal to the number of shields. So some of them have two, three shields, and that's really the kind of like hidden, besides just like events you could play at the spur of the moment, that's the hidden, like, you think you can defeat my unit, but you can't ever be sure because I could just have shields sitting in my Yeah, that, and I bet that mechanic was added for that reason, like, right? You can imagine the meeting where it's like, well... Tell me this, you've, you've been reading Dune. Yeah, almost uh, done. Someone on the chat saying that this could also work for Dune. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, everything could work for Dune, honestly. Now, I haven't gotten super far into Dune. I'm just about finished with the, the first book. And so for me, like, it's pretty much all happening at one planet. So I don't see it as like, oh, there's like seven. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure as the as the book and well, the universe expands, you understand there's Arrakis and then there's... These, like in Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones, it doesn't even have to be planets. It could be places. Yeah, that's like if true. Like each of these was a battle for Lord, uh, Game of Thrones, like Battle of Ruby Ford, Battle of the Trident, Battle of this. That's true. Like, oh, or man. like The Reach, uh -huh. Iron Islands. Absolutely. Uh, Westeros. Each little place that these things happen. Obviously, Westeros is the whole thing, but... Yeah, you yeah. got it. Oh, my gosh. All right, well, There's let's... so much potential. Let's do it. I'm going to play an oldie but a goodie. Down at... Uh, oh, yeah! Farron, we're going to spend one on the Rogue Trader. So, if you look, this is pretty cool. I hate that he, guy. He costs one, that. top left. He's got zero attack, one health. He has that one command icon, that one hammer. But then you'll see, under the flavor text, he has that plus one resource icon. So, if, if I win command of this planet... Uh, I get a bonus resource. So I would get two naturally from winning uh, Farron, but then he gives me a third. So that would be really good. And I'm basically, for one cost, putting a lot of pressure on Steven to put something out here. Because uh, if he doesn't, I just get three money every round, which That's is right. good. Uh, also, Enzo, to answer your question on Sky Tier, uh, you can include cards from any color. They just can't cast them. So I saw someone say, I don't know if this is true or not. People were talking, man. That you can include cards of any color in your deck, but to do that, you also, someone in your list has to be that color. Like to play any blue card, someone, ha you have to have blue in your list somewhere. I don't think that's true. I don't know. That's just what people were saying. People were talking, man. People were talking. Uh, limited is one limited card per per uh, moment, right? Per, per phase. Turn. Yep. All right, so I'm going to play a troop transport. The old thrones rule. Zero cost, limited. Sacrifice it to put a guardsman token into play or two guardsmen into play at a green planet. Uh, and do do abilities use your tap activation during a battle, or are they in addition to, right? They, they don't use your, your, your tap. You, you always get should. to exhaust someone. And Guardsmen, in case anybody's curious, these beautiful, I looked at these during the entire course of the game, just a big one, two. Just and a, there's like a little token Just cards. a body. Yeah. They're just a body. Girl, look at that body. Body. They're just a body. All right, I have to... So this is where I'm going to start actually thinking about it. Because, again, a battle is going to happen at any planet with a warlord and the first planet. And when you win a battle, you get to trigger the battle ability. So things I want to look at are where am I going to ultimately send my warlord? And that's going to be based on which battle do I actually want to win. Uh, so I actually need to start paying attention. And which icons do you want to win the game? Yeah, but, like, mm -hmm. if I win the battle of the third planet, you don't win the third planet. That's you right. don't get to put it over here. You can only take the first planet. So... Let me just read this. Uh, Put a big unit in. Mm, you know I like that. Big old chaos units. Uh, Taurus. Simon, it's always the same planet. So you don't you don't deck build like you don't use like these are the ten planets I'm choosing to bring to the game. Uh, it's always the same ten. So every player has the same, and they're always randomized. Now you definitely could do that, which would be phenomenal. If you had like sixty planets to choose from, like mm. the old uh, Lord of the Rings TCG. Whew. Sure enough. Ah, how is everybody uh, doing also? Let's let's take a second. Zach can be think, thinking about where his warlord is going to... This is the game of Conquest, too. There's so much going on. Somehow, actually, it doesn't feel super taxing like so many do. I think this is a great example of a very strategic game 
that is not overly complex. Sure. Right. So the strategy is huge, the decision making is huge, but the complexities of actually executing the game are fairly simple. I think Eric does a really good job when he's designing games of breaking turns down, like mm -hmm. basically segmenting your decision making across, uh, which means you can play it without actually knowing what you're doing. It, it gives it the strategy element, but yeah. it also stops you from like thinking too much about a certain situation until you actually know how to play the game. Uh, the other thing is that like there's not much information to carry. Like, I don't have to remember so much. Yeah. And like, oh, there's an icon here that shows the resource thing. I don't have to remember that. We can yeah. just see that's on the table. Do it, Now, do I have to keep playing until I match your build? Or is it just one, one, one? You go one, back one. and forth until okay. both players pass. And if you pass and they go, you can go again. I kind of like the match their build. The Star Wars TCG Yeah, vibe. yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, let's go two for uh, Zarathur's Flamers. Oh, yeah, I remember these guys. They blow up and do two damage. Sacrifice to deal two damage to a target unit at the same planet. So you can attack with them, and then you can take an action to sacrifice them. Yep. When's the window? Is it after an attack, before an attack, both? Both, I think. Probably any time. So I can do two damage and then blow up. And then if I'm with Zarathur, it's three and three, basically. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Tim's saying if both players have their signature cards, this game is absolutely incredible. The thing about it to me is, like, I don't know why you don't just have them start with their limit one of deck card. Yeah. Why is that not either start with it or just print it on them? Like, it is. It's, it makes it feel like this big epic warlord in 40K when they have their thing. But then when you have it and they don't, it's just a slaughter fest. Let's throw the Iron Guard recruits over here at Planet 2. Mm hmm, mm hmm. I love those command icons so much. Man, this game was good. It is really good. All right, let's play also at Planet 2, the Ravening Psychopath. So it's a one damage, three attack, one command. Reaction after this unit resolves an attack, deal one damage to this unit to deal one damage to an enemy army unit at the same planet. Okay. So again, with Zarathur, that would be a two. That's good. Well, ping pong. Ping pong. Now, do we gain? OK, so we go to the command phase, gain money, and then we go to the fighting, right? Yeah. So. Mm hmm. You've got two money left? Uh, yep, two money. And I'm going to bring up the turn structure. Two money, two money. Yeah, so it's deploy. Then we do the command phase, which is where we determine who wins command of the planets and get our resources and cards. Then we go to combat. Then we go to headquarters, which is the like cleanup phase. All right, Steel Legion Chimera coming in. Chimera sounds bad. Um, is that a tanky number thing? Number one, that's a tank, and it can prevent one damage to a non-vehicle. Mm, he's a he's a beefer. Yeah, I'm gonna try to cancel your Zarathur ability, basically. All right, I see. Let's see. One to one to one. That would be cool, Caesar. That would be super cool, actually. If your signature cards were like a plot deck in Thrones and you get to activate one of them every turn. That would be cool. It's like, oh, this turn my banner is the That's thing. a really fast way to fix this game. That's awesome, actually. Can you, do, correct me if I'm wrong. No. Can you play attachments during combat? Sounds familiar. I feel like I remember doing that. But was it like with a specific card or something, you think? That's what I, I know I have the way to like play units from hand, and there's the really dumb Space Marine, like look at the top six, the drop pod thing. Oh, yeah, that thing was, was oppressive. That, thing? that was Man, the that, worst. They came in and they just dropped a big, oh yeah, my gosh, that, that, I hated that so much. That's what I mean by game balance. So that card is just like ridiculously busted. Ambush. Ambush is the keyword we're looking for. Okay. There. If you have ambush, you can do it, yeah. What, what was the name of that Space Marine card that was silly? Well, you search and then you dropped in Drop one six, from the top. and you can play one that like costs three or four less. Yeah. I just want to find, I need to see that card to then remember. It's probably in this deck right here. It's definitely all that Space Marine joke. It's like was Drop awesome. Pod something, right? Drop Pod Assault. Is Drop what it was Pod called. Assault? Yeah. That was the worst. That ruined games, man. That was the worst. Yeah, Drop Pod Assault. There it is. That's it. Who could forget anybody out there play Son Conquest? Son of a. <laughs> Also known as Drop Pod for short. <laughs> Caught all you Conquest players out there in the chat. <laughs> Everybody saying Drop Pod. <laughs> yeah, it's a little PTSD on that one. It's the worst. Let me just think about this. Think on.
Mm-hmm. What a great, what a, it's a, it's a great source of joy to be playing this, honestly. It's I didn't really expect good. it to, to bring back so many good feelings. Maybe we should, maybe we should pivot Covenant and just see if we can just lock down some of these old systems and buy rights to them or whatever it is. And put them back. And just then I mean, that's, it sounds kind of like some a, folks the to, restoration game strategy a little bit. Yeah, but we'd They're, be restoring yeah. very different games. I yeah, think. I agree. Can you do you do you copyright systems? So the the law and the legal behind like game mechanics is like unbelievably impossible to protect. The thing you can do, like Wizards did this very effectively as one of the first premier like card games with Magic, is copyright terms, trademark terms like tap is mm -hmm. owned by Wizards and it means to do this to a card in a game. Um, so they have the word, but you can't. You can't copyright doing this to a card in a game. Right. It's too universal. Right? right. Same thing with most mechanics. So, like, mechanics, as long as you're not using... So, like, you couldn't call it Conquest. Right? Sure. But you could pretty much take, mechanically, this game and do whatever you wanted with really? it. Really? That's so fascinating. So, it, is there a, a synthesis of all the same mechanics existing in the same place that says this is a copyrighted so entity I, now? I think, essentially, if it went... The thing about it... Here's the thing. We got legal on the, yeah. phone, on the phone now. So, you know, I may have looked into this once or twice. Uh, the thing about it is, like, it has to be, I think, like, a certain... You can't calculate it, but, like, 5% different. Mm -hmm. Right? It, it, if it's exactly the same, you're going to have a problem. But even then, the real thing is that if whoever made the game is usually uh, a larger institution, they can sue you. Right. They can just run you out based on and lawyer fees. basically like, is yeah. it worth the money yeah. to like deal with this? So that's where like normally uh, you have to be different enough. I mean, it's a good example of like even the format of living card game. Uh, Upper Deck, unfortunately for them, at Gen Con one year, <laughs> I remember that. They, yeah, put out, the... <laughs> they switched the versus system to a, a living card game, and like living card game is a copyrighted trademarked term to define a card game with a release model that is not collectible. Essentially, right? Yeah. Set monthly releases of content that aren't collectible. Uh, so they, but the LCG living card game that's all owned, so you can't do it. But uh, plenty of games put out expandable card games that aren't collectible. The ECG. You just can't. It's same with like. It's why some games are called trading card games, some are called tournament card games, some are called collectible, collectible card, card games, games, customizable yeah. card games, etc. Um, so it's it's all. And fuzzy. been here, been here, saying um, uh, basically that it's a patent. You can get a patent, but it's extremely rare. And Magic had one, and it has since lost it. On the tap. Feature? On the game of mm. Magic, apparently. Mm. It's like a patent. It's like an invention, right? It's like I invented this way of things yeah. working. Together. Ben, you're right. So LCG is a trademark. So you can't use because it makes sense, right? Fantasy Flight invents a, a way of making a, putting out a game. They call it living card game. They brand it. People understand what a living card game is when you say it. Yeah. And they, like a clean they, they made that. So <laughs> sure, they should be the only ones to be able to call a product that. But they can't, they can't put a stamp on like putting out card games that aren't collectible. Like that's just, yeah. that's just not possible. So same with mechanics. It's like if you can't take away my ability to do this in a card game, then like can you take away having five locations and having don't tread on my ability to uh, turn so, a card hey, sideways, maybe, man. So, hey, maybe we'll take that week. We'll make the greatest game ever known to man. <laughs> uh, we'll send a kind salute to Eric Lang, and then we'll move along. I mean, do you think FFG owns this system? Would they Would they be like, hey, this is our catalog of... So, you also see that. So, like, uh, you had Attack Wing mm -hmm. after X-Wing came out, the whole Star Trek WizKids thing. So, like, it's also... If you want to just do it above, there's a way to do it in like the gray space, and yeah. like you also don't want to make enemies. In tabletop is a small industry, yeah. so like if a publisher just started like treading on your, you know, but like board games are the good luck. Like there's so many board That's games. True. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is exactly like my board game, and it's like, well, how was I supposed to know? There's eighty-two thousand <laughs> games. Like, it just happens, right? So it, it's a it's a thing, and then it's like, what's it worth? Because even if big board game card game companies sued. So let's say you made magic, literally magic with different art. Yeah, call it dinosaur it's like, land. What's that worth? And wizards has to be careful because they have to protect their own rights. And if mm -hmm. they don't, they can lose. You can lose rights that you don't protect. Right. That's where it gets really fuzzy with like the digital card games of like even like uh, like TTS and Arkham TTS recently, and that kind yeah. of. It's like it's not even necessarily like about what a company wants to do, but it's like if you want to maintain the rights to certain components, you have to defend those rights. Mm -hmm. And so if people can prove that you knew about it and didn't protect it, you can actually lose 
Yeah. There's like weird IP stuff going on too with all that. Anyways, now let's play. Hey, this is what tabletop's about, man. Yeah. It's about the conversation. All this stuff it? going on. Well, let's. let's <laughs> Granny, I will not. Dinosaur Land is happening. We've come all this way to design the perfect dinosaur fighting game. That's right. Or perhaps not even. Let's do a dinosaur version of Mythos where we're just trying to not die from the comet. I think. I'd play that game. I, ben, I agree. I, and I, honestly, I think all of the future LCGs are going to be co op. Now, there needs to be some kind of a revolution on how to distribute competitive card games because it's true that a lot of people don't like collectible, but it has a lot of advantages. Draft, sealed, cards have value no matter if you've got all the cards in the set. Do you pull that sweet foil that is a 1 in 20 million? Do you pull that alternate art card? You have to assign value to things that are already collected. So like with an LCG, I buy the pack, it's done. If every LCG pack, even let's say 1 out of 20, had a foil version of a Warlord, now I can use packs as prizes. I can wager packs with friends, you know, in a, in a game. I might want to buy with store credit the 20 LCG packs I already have to see if I can pull some foils. So there are, there are economic advantages, there are collectability advantages, they keep the product relevant. Um, but it's also really annoying as a player because you got to spend a lot of money to do what you want to do, which is play. Well, I also think... What is this? Two I... Uh, man... Plus two command icons. Ah, promotion. You got all the cards I remember. So uh, part of that, too, uh, fresh off of Destiny, um, doing its thing and being collectible, which was the first collectible game I played after a long stint of not playing collectible games, like a like, good decade. Um, the thing to me that's interesting, though, is a collectible game done right, what it also does, you have, you have to understand, like, yeah, it's like more expensive, but that more expensive means that the retailer and the publisher are making more money. Yeah. And ideally what that means is that they're able to produce more content, they're able to make more cards, they're able to invest more in the art and the, the organized play and the resources and the marketing and the support behind it. Um, there's a reason that Magic is the biggest card game in the world. It's because the economics of it are so good that publishers can invest more in it and retailers can actually invest in it as well. So like... Yes, it's more expensive as a player, and technically they could deliver that card game to you in a way that's much less expensive. But if they did that, um, there's so much that they the resources they don't have. So it's kind of a question for me with Destiny as an example. I was more than happy paying what I was paying to collect Destiny, given the amount of amount and quality of the content I was getting, and would happily have continued doing that. So it, it really just depends. And I get it. I, I totally get the hesitation on collectible games. Don't and I, I people buying packs. But I also pulled that Silver Surfer as a six-year-old, and it got in my brain yeah. that like the the high from doing that is like super amazing. Uh, but it's not like gambling. Finding though. what you want. It's not gambling because you always get eleven cards. That's right. That's right. Gambling means you can just lose your money. You know what you're getting. You just don't know exactly what they're going to look Sometimes like. Sometimes the chips are just worth less. Like than you buy other a lottery times. ticket, and it's like most of the time it's just you're just losing your money. Yeah, it's just you buy yeah, a pack of true. cards, and you know you're getting eleven or fifteen or whatever the number is playable components to the game that you're playing. But what if every lottery ticket you were guaranteed to get one coin, and some coins were pennies and some coins were worth sixteen million dollars? <laughs> I mean, the thing is, right, like, think about this. Think about a box of Pokemon or a box of whatever game, Destiny. It's like, in Destiny, they, they, they did kind of the minimal collectible, which I think was a mistake. But, like, you know you're getting, you know, 30 rares and 6 legendaries and 36 uncommons and nine, 100 commons. Yeah. And so it's like, that, that box, no matter what comes in it, has a certain amount of value in it. And it's worth the price that you're having to pay for that box. Um, now, Magic does it. Magic's a different story, right? Different beast. They... they it's a different story. Anyways, all right. This uh, is annoying. I put a sanctioned psycho here. It's two to your one. I should have put my command over here. What have I done? Your promotion? Well, you played it too soon. All right, I'm going to pass. Okay. Um, I'm also going to pass. Now what happens? Command phase? We go to the command phase. Wait, we do the warlord first, don't we? That's what we're doing. Okay. Yeah, so the first okay. thing is we take our dial. We choose a number from one to five. So this is planet one, planet five. One through five. Uh, and we send them there, and that's where a battle's going to happen, along with the first planet. And they also, if you're the only ca person with a ready warlord at a planet, you win that planet. Mm, so I can just maybe go get two resources right uh, here. And there will be a battle there, and, and you're by yourself, opponent, and you yeah. take one. So that's a big, big old three-resource swing. And then, like, I'm looking at Zach, probably, if he goes here, you know, he's going to get the extra resource. He's also, the routing is probably not going to matter as much, although he could route this here after the fact. Is there? Go here and try to try to wreck me on this one. 
especially if the Steel Legion kills the Flamers, then if you get to trigger this, but then this one will be gone, so we won't have less units, so that's not an issue. It's like there's a million, there's a million ways to play uh, baseball here. <clears throat> baseball powder. <clears throat> baseball powder. I am the information. I'm the information. <clears throat> hmm. And you got to remember the well, old cards shields. are hard to come by, aren't they? Do we ever draw any natural cards? Uh, I think at the end of the round. Don't we draw two always and get two two money? I think so. Two oh, and two, uh, eyes of blue. Eyes of blue. What is that? Was doll, I think it was dollhouse. Uh, what's a dollhouse? You've never seen dollhouse? No. All right. Next project. Yeah, dollhouse and Marvel movies. I'll watch one Marvel movie for every season of dollhouse you watch. There's only one season. I know the truth. There's like two seasons. How many seasons are there? It was another Joss Whedon got to finish this up quickly because we're getting canceled thing. That did, later became he, he one did of the most popular lot. shows ever. All right. During the headquarters phase, place the first planet token on the leftmost face up planet. Reveal the leftmost face down planet. Oh, Firefly. Thank you. Got uh, another Joss Whedon. Each player must draw two. Each player must take four resources. Each player readies all exhausted cards. Pass initiative token. Draw two, gain four at the end yeah. of the turn every time. Okay. Yeah. That's right, because it was River's uh, thing. Yeah. And for everyone on chat, how do you, uh, initiative, I know there's a way for that to flip during a turn somehow, so I just want to make sure I'm not forgetting that. Well, 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 Steven. Well, well. Now remember, everything at a planet, even if he's not there, each other unit at a planet is plus one attack uh, for me. So these guys are both plus one attack. Mm, that's interesting. Yeah. So all told, I should win. After this unit resolves an attack, well, we won't fight. Okay. Okay. All right. I get it. Seal Legion uh, over there trying to do some stuff here. Okay. And then uh, Zarathur, really, you just try to kill Zarathur, as I remember. That's kind of the game that I'm playing is, can I just murder you? It would be a good thing for you to do. Hmm. 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 Interesting. <laughs> Indeed. Ah, here. This is. I, I love this. It reminds me of X Wing, where you like set your dials and then you just wait and see what your opponent did. It's about to get weird. <clears throat> Good. All right, let's go. Where are you going? I'm going to two. I'm going to one. Ain't no party like a Scranton party. <laughs> Scranton party don't stop. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> All right, so we did that. I'm. I'm proud of us. How, how proud We've done it. We okay, now we resolve the command stuff, right? Yeah, so I am the only one with a ready warlord here. Yeah. So I automatically win that. I get to draw a card. I'm the only one here. I get to draw a card and gain a resource. That seems better for you. And No then, one's here. No one's here. Then you are ahead here. Two so to you one. will get to trigger it. I get two. I'm still the best at this game. That's what uh -huh. Zach didn't realize. What you don't realize is that I'm an aggro player. So you see that three-color planet on the first first block over here? That's my goal. I see it. All right, uh, let's see. Someone, anyone answer my initiative question? I think warlords would... take initiative. If both warlords are there, then it goes to the command icons. Right on. Okay, if both so warlords, initiative here. then first player has initiative. Got it. All right, so I have initiative. Player pass. I get to do things. Let's do this, because if not, you will brutally murder Man, him. Man, I can't see anything with these lights. Yeah. It's amazing. So Just tell me what you're doing. We're on the first planet. Let's do this. I'm going to put him over here. This is my first planet right now. Okay, cool. You want to put yours here so I can sure, see? Sure, I'll, I'll put him here. So Zarathur's Flamers is going to attack for two, and then it's plus one because Zarathur is there. And is it only plus one if it goes through? When damage is assigned at this planet, increase that by one. So I'm okay. assigning the damage. It's yeah. a three, and then now you have the chance to, to mess with it. Yeah. All right, so a three it is. Three. Let's see, I take three. Uh, let's see if I take that, and then the, okay, and then you do the, there, and then, uh, and does he work for himself as well? When uh, damage is assigned? At any damage at this point. By an enemy, to an enemy unit? Yeah. Okay, so him, him as well. Okay. Okay, I take three. Okay, now I believe I can spend this action right now. That seems right, yeah. To blow up what and hit you do? for three. Uh, basically, deal two damage to a target non-warlord at this planet, but it would be three because Zarathur's there. Who gets the first action? Well, I think there's actions both before and after attack. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, I can also pop in two soldiers. So I need to know 
when that I think happens. he would have an action even if I get rid of him, though, to do that. Yeah. Command icons, that just, yeah. Combat, Warlords. Brian and Tailbone are going to catch up because they were. Flare token is the tiebreaker. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So then you attack me, and then you try to sacrifice yourself to deal a bunch of damage. Uh, first action goes to the player with initiative. Right on, which should be you, right? Which is me. Of so then you take an action and, and blow this thing up. Yeah, so then I'll hit you for three. Okay. And, that's and then I get an action. Flamers. And then you get an action. Hmm. Interesting. Hey, hey, hey. How many cards you got in your hand? Four. Okay. Okay. All right. I'm going to pop this. Sacrifice it to put a guard, two guardsmen into play at a green planet. Cancel it. <laughs> All right. Guardsmen. You got it. Then I get the next attack. You get the next attack. All right. Take two. Oof. That commander's good. Uh, I'll assign two, or one and plus one because of his ability, to your other guardsmen. Shield for two. Okay. Attack for two. Let's shield one of it. Done. Ready? Uh, yep. Retreats if desired. I have none. None. All right. I'll assign two to your guy. Gone. Take two. Getting frisky. Let's mm, spin them cards. Cancel one. Yes. Okay. Ready? Uh, I'm out. Okay. I win the planet. You win the planet. <laughs> My favorite part of this card. It says, "This is Iridial. Battle. Remove all damage from a target unit." It's not a unit. He is too. Nope. He can totally remove this from <laughs> There's him. No way. Right? <laughs> He's not a unit. I remember doing this. He's a warlord. You're not a unit. I think it counts. Are warlords units? Oh, oh I Steven can't, can't retreat. retreat. Oh, right on. Yeah, because it's, it's in the text, so you get to kill my uh, thing. And then I'll murder you. Okay. I thought those weren't units. Warlord unit. Warlord is a unit? That changes everything. <laughs> do you want to do something different? I, everything different, yeah. Uh, okay, can heal. All I, right. I remember distinctly... So that's a weird. That that's tomb. okay. Yeah, that does change everything. Would it basically make you not pop the guardsman? Yeah, let's just not pop the guardsman. Yeah. Because we, I was hoping to get like five damage on you. Yeah, you're queuing me up for the old assassination. Yeah, no way. All right, so units are warlords. So then I take this planet. All right, all right, I believe it. And he goes back to my HQ. Mm-hmm. And then we go to the next planet that has a warlord. It's mine. Which is here. And then you have a warlord, so you actually have initiative. I here. got the initiative here. Okay, so. Uh, so he counts himself out each other unit. Okay. And you, you take three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, take two. Correct. So that's smart because if you had attacked with your warlord, I could potentially knock the other one off the table mm -hmm. before it gets to do anything. Now, the weird thing is, like, so if you actually... Yeah, that's interesting. So if you do knock this off the table then this would resolve in my favor if you retreat. So you want that unit to die. I very much <laughs> want it to die. Uh, so I'm going to assign one damage to your Warlord, and then after he resolves damage, I can deal a damage to myself to deal another damage to a unit. Okay. So I will deal another damage to him, and I will go away. Done. Okay. So then everything readies. We technically check for retreats. I'm not retreating. All right, then you win the planet. Yay. I trigger the ability, but I do not control fewer, so it doesn't that's, happen. That's Taurus? Yeah. All right, and then yeah, I think your warlord just, uh, at the end he'll go home, and then you Done. can you can take units with him. Right on. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then there's no battle here because okay. that's the end. That's and right. So that's right. we get to the uh, command phase, is what it's called, I think. Headquarters phase. Headquarters phase. So then he goes back to your headquarters. You can technically leave units, or they can go with him, and then I'll they leave. will actually follow him when he gets assigned to another planet. Uh, this will slide up and become the first uh, planet. That's right. And then we will reveal reveal a new planet. planet. Nice. Which is uh, Eloth. Is two cards. It's a lot of text on this battle ability. <laughs> Search the top three cards <laughs> of your deck for a card. Add it to your hand. And place the remaining cards on the bottom of your deck in every order. These 
These planet cards are insanely beautiful. They look great. Let's uh, see, what's that? Toss me that unit that you sacrificed there, that last thing. I'm going to see. People were talking. This unit to deal one damage. I think, yeah. I think you can do that. You could probably kill it. You can still kill it. To, it's the, you pay the cost to do damage to you. And I think the effect still triggers even if you kill yourself. There's no damage. way that couldn't. Yeah. It seems like. I'm going to. Bet. Certainly, it seems like it was done to me a bunch. Bet money on that. All right, so then we each gain four resources. Four money. We each draw two cards. And then we, I believe this passes to you. Yeah, it seems right. And it's your turn. Draw two. Okay. Interesting. Mm, mm, mm. Apparently, at the end of a battle though, is when the Warlord goes. And do you choose the units that go with it at that point as well? Or do, can you retreat at that point? Don't draw three? What does that mean? Oh, <laughs> this is from him moment. I get it. <laughs> this it's is funny. from him. That's funny. He's a funny guy. Um, okay, so I've got seven to spend. Hmm. Okay, I, I get it. Let's uh, pay one for the old Rattling Deadeye. Greatest old, card in this game. Old Deadeye himself? The one and only Dead Eye himself. I was afraid of that. Hmm. Yeah, you got to retreat. If you want to move the units, you've got to bring them back with your Warlord, and then they go where the Warlord goes. I remember that. I remember this card. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Hmm, hmm. Gots to be careful. Yeah, you need to stay there unless it's playing. That's right, Ryan. That's how I remember it, too. I'm going to play Chaos Fanatics downtown. Hmm. Two so cards. Looking for the card draw. He wants some cards. It's the kind of thing where, like, if you don't contest it, I just get two cards for the next couple turns. That's crazy. Crazy, I tell you. Yeah. It'll get contested for sure. This is a great game. It's good. Let's put... <laughs> Ryan says they can't retreat. It's funny because of your ability. Rattling. You have all these cheap dudes. What's the deal with this? What's the deal with cheap dudes? What's the dealio? I can't retreat from green planets. And any planet that I'm at that I do retreat from, I'm destroyed. So on a non-green planet, if I choose to retreat when war is there, I'm destroyed instead. Which is essentially the same thing. Look at you. Fanning out over here. Fan it out, man. Swarm. I don't like Human it. Human tactics. I'm playing the Terrans. Well, all right, we're going to go Zarathur's Flamers on planet two. I remember hating all those things that you're playing there. I love that card. Attack. See ya. Just there. Uh, you got two left The there. bomb. Mm-hmm. What's that guy do? Oh, he's just a weirdo. Two command icons. Um, so really, it's about the cards. Yeah, it's about the cards. Cards are good. OK. Let's play the Iron Guard recruits here. Contested. Consider it contested. Yeah, Sam, you're you're right. They are busted. <laughs> a lot of the cards in this game would would qualify for that. Um, pass. Okay. Now, once you pass, you're done, right? Forever, or can you play again? I think if you, I play? you can play back in if your opponent continues play. Okay. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Max says, when are you going to play Blood Bowl Team Manager? Now that's a game. Let's go to here on the snake bite. Mm. Came to party. Pass. OK. Burp, burp. 
<laughs> All right, what do you got? I got one. I got a three. Zarthur came to party. I think I had to turn this off for you. Because it's just too, like, if you just go there uncontested and you get to draw three cards, I can't. It's too good. That can't happen. And I assumed you were going to do that, so yeah. I ran for the hills. But I, you can't allow it. Because if I go one and you don't, it just can't, can't allow it. It just gets fuzzy for you. you can't. What up, Brad Andres on Facebook? Good to see you, Brad. Hey, hope you're doing well. We're talking about how poorly balanced all these cards are. Yeah, who's the developer on this? Who, who was in charge of that decision, Brad? And why is this flamer so good? Yeah, I don't know if that's the huh? thing. I don't know if why that's is that the, Clive X leader in the game? That's the one. <laughs> Although I think he expressed deep regrets over that. Uh, all right, so we go to the command phase. You get command of this planet because you have a warlord. I'm going to draw a card. I'm going to gain a resource. All right, you're going to out-resource me here. Uh, you're at one command icon ahead here, so you get a resource. Done. I have a warlord here, so I get two resources. You got him. They make the warlords feel... Significant. They really do. Two you win here. this one, so you get two. We tie here, so nothing happens. Nothing happens. Everybody wanted to go here, by the way. Let's oh, just yeah. agree that we both were considering searching the top three cards. If this wasn't so good, yes, would have happened. Okay, uh, so then we go to battle. You have Warlord here, so battle happens. Battle happens. Now, no. let me think about this. I could do some fun stuff. All right, see if you can get in there. I'll pass. Okay, I'll pass as well. You win. What's the battle say? Uh, the battle says it's immaterial to me because I have more units than you. Oh, bummer. So this will retreat. This will automatically come back with me after the battle. And then you get the planet. And I get the planet. So we're each on the, the scoreboard. Now, can it, that's not considered a retreat, right? If that's he comes back retreat, home yeah. with me. Yeah. That's, just, that's just going home. It's just going home. Going we don't call home it retreating. We call it some, going home. For some glory. <laughs> All right, we're going to go here. We have a warlord battle. I have a warlord. You don't. So I have initiative. That's right. But I have ranged. So I will get a, a ping before you can do anything, right. unless you have a range Ping thing. it up, my friend. Well, um, let's do two to you. I'll assign two to you. All right. Now I got decisions. <clears throat> I'm going to pop the troop transport. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Then I have to take an action, unfortunately. Take him. Kills Erathur. Because that's what, four damage? Mm -hmm. Too much. Uh, let's play a Warp Storm. Set team. Combat action. Deal two damage to each unit without an attachment at a target planet or HQ. Yourself as well? Yep. Huh. Well, I'll deal two. Two damage to everything at the planet. Deal yeah. with it. And I get the next attack? Yep. Okay. I'll shield one of them. Okay. So one there. Now, does his ability, is that going to turn that into two more? Is that going to turn it into it's, one more? It's three damage total. Oh, three damage Sorry. to everything. Yeah, cut. Yeah. Well, three to everything on your, all your units. Right. Clever that you didn't say Sorry. that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. RTFC, as Hans would say. Freaking chaos. <laughs> all right. Three, three, and two. Yeah, you're good. Got it. All right. You got anything else? Warp Storm is like the, the go-to card. Nope, I got nothing else. You need to get a resource from me. All right, stolen. And then that's the end of the battles. He comes home. Yeah. All right, so we go to the end of the round. We each gain four. Draw two and draw three. Wait a minute. Draw three, what are you talking about? <laughs> I just keep making those jokes. Uh, okay, four resources and then cards, right? And then cards. I need more cards. Jimmy, it's what it says on the card. Yeah, so basically my thinking there was I could get two resources, clear your unit so you don't just keep getting that. I'm trying to basically like prevent you from landsliding me. All right, then we get Barless. Another two draw. Woof. Mm. Woof. Late stage draw cards, huh? And then the first player token passes back to me. Okay, I get it. I remember this. Okay. Hmm. 
Bobby Hill. You got three cards? Yeah, yeah. It was that just feels three. great. It's bad. It's bad news beats. I need you to get off my green. I'm all greens, man. What do you think? Isn't it interesting? Three cards and so many interesting decisions. Brad, did you respond to our taunting? He probably did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good idea. He just left a heart and then got out of here. And then left. <laughs> good decision. All right, we're going to play on Planet One a Rotten Plague Bearer. Oh, he has an action I can take to deal damage to a target unit of that planet. And I can do it during this turn. What? I can do that action during the build. During the thing phase? Yeah, just as one. Just remember that there. Exhaustive units deal one damage to target unit at this planet. Why do all? Of, why are all of these cards so stupid? I, you know, I, I got a lot to say about burn as a mechanic in games. Maybe it's because I'm always playing Zach and he loves it. The idea that there's entire archetypes that are just look at the board and then make the right decision by playing damage cards. I like making the right decision. It's garbage. You just like playing bad cards. No, it's just, I think, a game sometimes loses something if there's an entire faction that's just like, I'm just going to do damage to everything without having to attack. It's not too bad. Thrones is the worst. Thrones is awful. Okay. Um... Okay, well. I'm seeing this game more than ever. What does Ryan mean if he's exhausted, his command doesn't count? I guess command doesn't count if you're exhausted. Mm. You're a little hammer. Mm -hmm. Good to know. I'm a high stepping. Okay, so let's think. Let's just think for a second. Let's drop Talon Raiders right there. Mm. They get plus two if there's a Warlord there. So plus three. It's just three attack if my Warlord ends up Seems there. Seems bad. Let's go Raven and Psychopath. Contesting A. Mm -hmm. Huh. Interesting. And we put it at, at his HQ. That's weird. I don't want that at all. Um. I hope that's not a unit. This? All right, let's go here. Who, uh, needs, who needs units anyway? Griffin Escort going there. It brings in two guardsmen when you Oof. drop it. Oof. You can't have a second warp storm, right? <laughs> ah, Steven. Bunch of stuff. Deal with it. Right? I have to do math. Oh no, not the math time. Zach sent me an email this morning about a ledger. It was a it was, it was a, the most boring email I've ever a received. A task? It was not an email. <laughs> You're gonna fill that ledger in. I with saw a pride. a shared Google document in my email, and it said ledger. And you're like, like oh, oh lord. I guess. No, thank you. Yeah, I just got to dealing with accountants for a while. What's up, Daniel? Yeah, it's it's great. This is a good good game. Good game. It's kind of a time for choosing. 
You gotta choose when to hold them, no when to close them. All right, I'm putting my cards on the table. Okay. How many cards in your hand? Two. All right. I'm gonna attach Mark of Chaos to my Zarathus Flamers. Attach to an army unit, interrupt. When attach unit leaves play, deal one damage to each enemy unit at this planet. Just remember that. He leaves play one to everything? One to everything. Two to everything if your warlord's there? Yep. Okay. So yeah, so you're likely to put him there. Fair. And so you'll basically do nothing at HQ. That ability is going to be dead for you. So. You're dead to me. Maybe I should try to take advantage and just lose the battle. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Maybe that's why I have this goes. I'll pass. You got two money? Is that active money? Active money. Money in the bank. Two money. Are you passing as well? Yeah. Or do you want to play, play the nun cards? You could exhaust, I guess, that thing. Yeah, I'm not doing that yet. Okay, so where am I going? Let me, let me, can I touch these? Yeah, go ahead. So you do two, and then two, and then one. So let's just say two, two, one. Yeah, assuming, well, nope, okay. All right, okay. Do one damage to target unit, okay. I'm, I'm with it, I'm hip, I got it. Hip and with it. I'm hip in with it, yeah. I'm ready. I'm not. <laughs> the game's great, guys. I also like playing straightforward decks and then you can't target the warlord with the flamer ability. Okay, that's worth knowing. Let's make sure. Yeah, it has to be a different non warlord unit. It says it right there on the card, of course. It's printed right there on the box. Why do that? But if I go here, you go there. It's always a battle at the first planet. Isn't that true of life? <laughs> always a battle at the first There's planet. There's always a battle at the first planet. I've put it on that. a bumper sticker, I've put it on the back of your car. Pretty much everywhere. Everyone driving by will go, huh, I guess you're right. This was, this was a definite period of uh, gaming, yeah. the, the early LCG competitive thing going on. For us, it definitely was. What, was, what else was going on at this time, car game was? You ready? Yeah. I'm going to four. I'm also going to four. <laughs> Can't let you get those cards. Not the cards. Oh, this is going to go bad. That's the worst thing that could have happened. <laughs> I should have gone to anywhere else. Okay, come in. Three to two, I get a money. Yep. One to one. Nothing. Two to one, you get it. Two money. I wish it could turn into something. You get this because you have a commander and more icons now. Two cards. That's how you lose. All right, battle at the first planet. Battle at the first planet. Let me see. We have a moment here. Your guy with war is exhausted. Yes, thank you. So then you don't actually draw those cards. Oh, I don't. Here we go. Because we tied. That makes sense. That's Just like that. That's less bad. OK, so you've got no cards. Still so bad. this is a wide open game here. All right, you ready for the battle? Hold on, let me fix this. I was gonna say, are you looking at timing windows over there? No. Thank you, Tobin, that's exactly what I needed. They come in exhausted because they just can't keep up. 
So what I was looking at, by the way, I could have gone here and gone aggro. Mm -hmm. If I win that planet, obviously I have two of each color, so I can actually win, but you couldn't win till the last planet. Mm -hmm. So then I have like four turns to win any one planet, which is pretty good. But if I go there, I'm pretty much guaranteed I'm going to get bloodied. 100%. Because I have no cards. Yeah. Uh, so that's going to be ugly. And then if I go here and you don't go here, I get two cards. Mm -hmm. And ideally, if I draw at least one shield, I think I can still squeak this out. Um, that was my thinking, too, is even if you Warlord goes here, if I get two additional cards, I've got two events in my hand. If I draw anything that turns these ranged or any of the tactics you that I've got... You can just dominate me. Yeah. Yeah. But here we are. Here we are. And you've got no cards, so this will be easy. Uh, first things first, I'm going to do two damage to... You have ranged. Uh, I have ranged. Uh, yeah. See, so that was first. There's an action window, though, where you can do I'm anything. Not, I'm not doing anything range. yet. Okay. Um... Two to the flamer, dude. Oh, it's two. Yeah. I will do something then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll just blow up here. So it'll do th three, one to everything and two to something else. So I'll okay. let the ones happen. Well, I, I can shield. Yeah. Actually, so. so I'll do two first. Uh, let's do two. To this thing. Two to the Griffin Escort. Yeah, that's good. Take two. Okay. And then one to everything? And then one to everything else. Um, I'm going to shield the uh, Rattling. And okay. then we'll do one here, one here, one and one. I don't have another action. Mm -hmm. I'm going to exhaust here to do one, and we'll attempt to do one to that thing. All right, you got it. And then you brutally murder me. You're gone. Two to you. Got him. OK. And then as everything, I think, comes back, right? Mm -hmm. Comes back here. They'll be back. That's when I need it. I also wanted those cards because if this, no matter how this triggers, I have a good shot at getting a unit into play. So each player can put a play into from HQ. You don't have any cards. I don't have any cards that will work for that. So nothing there. Okay. So I take this boy. And now I've got a long game ahead of me. And now we can just push this stuff down for now. Yeah. These are the end of the planets too. So oh, good. We don't get more. It's the forever planets. Yeah. Okay. Now we go here. Yep, and I go first. Yeah. I'll retreat. Hmm. Interesting. Let's do two to your uh, chaos boy. He dead. All right, I win the battle. Search the top three for a card, add it to my hand, place the remaining on the bottom in any order. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kang, that's awesome to hear. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Glad you enjoy it. Okay. This is fine. Where's all my healing this cards? One. And we'll throw those two under. All right. That's it. That's it. And then uh, gain our box, draw our cards. What happens here? Then so they all ready. Everything ready. And then your warlord has to go back. And you can take any of those guys with you that you want. Yeah. OK. So I'll leave those guys there. I'll keep getting my two cards, hopefully. Uh, Fire Chicken saying you can't. No. Nope. Alex saying you can't War retreat until yeah, one battle. Yeah, Warlord can always retreat. Warlord can retreat whenever. Yeah. As so I as long as you it. have that first action, you can get out of town. First player then goes to you, me? It goes back to you. Because oh. I was first player, that's so why okay. I got to retreat first. Draw Let me two draw. or three. And gain two money. So this, I'm in the position that we talk about why this game gets called a snowball, which is you just turn into two events. Well, I've been losing on the you won the last two planets. You have a ton of units down here in HQ and a ton of units on the board, and you only draw two a turn. 
Mm -hmm. So if you have more units, you're more likely to win the card draw. Win the command, and then you get more units. And then you get more units, and so it kind of spirals out of control. So like the first turn or two is just super critical, and the game is meant to be fast. So like, don't allow that to happen. But <laughs> between that, between <laughs> between that, and then also like sometimes you have your signature card, sometimes you don't. It just created so many. The, when the games were good, they were amazing, and when they were off, they were really off. Yeah, you can definitely lose. Just straight up lose. Have you done that now? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you. Let's see. Yeah, you just win this planet and it's over. Yeah, I'll There's play no way. Two there. One there. It was cute while it lasted. Hold and then on, we got. I gotta, I gotta play things. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna show you. If you want to, we can. I'll take it back. Let's look at what it, yeah, what it looks just, like. Yeah, you got it. You got it. You got got the preemptive barrage too, which is nice. That's the three units become ranged, so it's just like. Pfft. Super good. Yeah, so I really, essentially at this point, my my out is going to be drawing a Warp Storm. Yeah. Because if I go to, I have to stop you from this planet. So if I go there with my Warlord, that's three damage to each of your units, and I kind of queued all of them up so that if you bring them over, you're going to have to shield or they're going to go away. Yeah. Um, but even then, that's not a great <laughs> out. That's, that's not great what out. Want. Yeah, David. So David asking, um, this is really good. It, is this a design issue, the snowball that we're talking about, or is it a development issue? I, I think it's a little of both. I think it has to be a design issue. Right? Because the, the card draw mechanic, to me, being tied to the planets, I think is clever. But also, like, it just... <laughs> if you're locked out of cards, it's going to make it... Once you get more cards early, it's easier for you to keep getting more cards than your opponent. That's right. Um, and so, when you're only drawing two and you're getting four resources, like, it's just so, imp the cards are so valuable. So, it's just like if you happen to have more command icons, like, you, you out-commanded me mm -hmm. on pretty much every planet. And it was like, once you had that in play the first time, it's very difficult for me to get ahead of that curve. Right, because you start winning the resource battle. Yeah. And, and there, you know, there are ways to play around that as best you can, but the reality, if you just look at this game on, like, a as a macro kind of zoom out thing and you say there's a pretty simple fact and that is that if you succeed at getting cards and resources during the command phase you'll be more likely to get cards and resources in future command phases that simple fact alone is literally and I don't think it's an issue I think that's the whole point like I, I really do think that the the idea wasn't that that's a problem yeah it's that like yeah this is war and if you get an advantage, it leads to more advantages and more advantages. Um, and there are, you know, there are moments where there's glimmers of the ability to catch up. Like maybe you go to a backwater planet that has two cards on it. That is not a great play, but it's guaranteed to get you two cards. Like that one at the absolutely. You like, gone I could have gone there. Discard a card from my hand, and you draw two. And it's like, well, that's and the the ability good. for your warlord to auto win a planet command if your opponent doesn't also send their warlord there. Uh, is is relevant and really important, but it almost feels like to me like uh, I would find the game. I don't think it's a problem. I think equally skilled players find a way to play around it. Yeah, play around where you put your command it, icons it. makes sense. Which where you send your warlord to like get rid of your opponent's command icons off the table makes a lot of sense. But I do think that like as an example, if you had uh, at the end of the turn instead of drawing two, you drew four where it's like you just allow for more things to happen, more interaction, like you have more units, you have more shields, you have more stuff. It's like the combats would get crazier if mm -hmm. you just defaulted to more cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but like when you're on the two a turn, if that's all you're getting, maybe you draw units and maybe you don't. Maybe you don't, that's right. I do, I wonder, um, it may be, you know, one way you could fix this just content-wise is you could make it so that every planet draws you at least one card if you win it on the command side. Because like some of them are just, we saw a lot of zero card planets. Yeah. So like one thing you could do, and it would it would change the dynamics of the game a little bit, but every every planet at least is one card and one resource, and then some of them would have additional bonuses, like it's an additional resource if sure. you win this one or additional card. Because then it at least means that like no matter where you go, if you win, you can get a card. It'd be very difficult, yeah, because like it'd be very difficult to not be able to win at least one planet. So that's at least a lifeline into an extra yeah. card that sometimes would, would I, be helpful. I think that's, that's it. It's like just a little, a touch more access to cards. Like if card draw were a little less uh, stingy, but I, I also think like there's you can play cards in your deck around it. That's why the drop pub is so insane. 
is that it was like you search, you find the card you want on the top six, and you play it. It's like unreal value. Card value. Let's do it. Let's do another one. All um, right. I'm going to pick someone else. I'm going to take somebody. Ooh, man, see, like the Necrons just don't play like I'm interested in playing. It Deploy looks... the topmost unit card in a target discard pile. Does that mean yours as well? So this is... Keep me away from that. I'm going to play uh, El Arnaker. Eldar. Arnaker? How do you say that? Arnaker? Anriker? Arnaker. I, I don't know how to speak either undead or robot. So... A-N-R-A-K-Y-R. <laughs> the Traveler. Anranger. He has a deploy action to play the topmost unit card in a target discard pile. We'll do it. I'm going undead. Ooh, gross. Okay, cool. We kind of look the same, too. I wonder if you're a robot version, dead version of me. Ryan says that uh, Necron deck is weird. That makes me uncomfortable. I'm we... going to do it, though, because okay. I'm not playing Captain Kato. He can get out of here. Kato's in there? Kato's a curious. Right? Uh, yeah, he's Kato he's right probably there, yeah. the juice. Same I don't with think you Ragnar. have any Tau in here, do you, Ryan? Is that not Tau? No, that's uh, Elder Eldar. Hmm. Elder Wrath. Tau. Eldar. Tau. Okay. I remember this deck. So now we'll get into the stuff that's less obvious. Ryan says, dude, Zach, you're going to have a bad time. Impossible. I'm having a great time. So Why don't you play Blood Mane? Or I'm Black not, Mane? I want to just try it. All right, let's try let's, it. It could go bad, but we're just going to explore. Let's we'll, take a look. We'll at least get one, uh, one or two more after this, I assume. All right, hold on. Maybe I should play something weird as well. Is that what you guys are, are suggesting? Because... I know Elder Wrath is like the the bomb dot, dot com here. Plague Father is really good. Um, do you want to? Do you want me to just play the Zerg and and figure it out? The stock stalking Lictor. <laughs> the sorry the uh, Tyranids. So one thing that I remember this. So you choose like a you choose your main thing and then you have like a trait your synapse. This is too weird. I remember it's got to move around and stuff. I just that's just overwhelming for me. Let's play Black Mane. Taking Ragnar into the into the party here. He's like way better than the Tau guy, right? Isn't he like the best? Do you think so? All right, I'm back to I'm back to Eldar. All right, give me Eldar. Let's just do it. It doesn't matter. We'll just if we play fast, it goes. You know, we we'll get through all the decks. That's quick. There, there's so many Tyranid rules I'd have to remember. I never really uh, played by the time that they hit. Oh, you have some weird combo deck. I'll so, figure it out. Yeah, right. Said every combo player, right? I'll figure this out while I'm playing. No, no planning needed. All right. These three are going to go to the wayside. Uh, one is you. Three is me. Okay. One is you. One is Your me. first player. So the left is actually backwards now. So, like, technically, this would be the first planet. Oh, right on. So then these two get piled up, and these become our... Why don't we just make you the first player for ease of camera? Does it matter? I don't know. It's kind of awkward to see this one first. Let's do it. We'll do it. I mean, we can also just go left to right. It doesn't matter. Do we, we reveal five, right? Yep. We have Farron. We have Nectivus. We have Taurus. We have Barless. We have <laughs> Iridial. Oh my gosh, they're all here. We've Tarly got them and all. Barley. <laughs> and Tarly and Barley, the kids from the city. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Ryan says, look at the units before playing. All right, let me just scan through here. Yeah, Tobin, what else is the uh, what else is the synapse? So does it automatically win you a thing, or is it just a normal unit that shows up to the planet? <laughs> oh. Let's just, let's just do it like this. All right. Okay, so we'll do this planet first, always. I see what's happening. <laughs> this is my the matchup that I hate absolutely the most. A combo deck. It's like, ugh. Can't we just play the game? Okay. It's basically they take over units from other factions, right? Uh -huh. They like possess them and like raise them from the dead, kind of a thing. So like. I'm basically trying to get creatures into play from other factions. That's oh. it. Well, okay. I've got Eldar. Well, like, I have units in here from other factions somehow. Okay, so to, okay, so it's just normal. Uh, Synapse uh, doesn't trigger combat. It has command icons. Okay. Synapse come back at the end of combat. Good. Okay. Camera's off. 
All right, hold on. We'll fix it. Figure out why. The lights are out. <laughs> Give me a second. Can they hear us, sir? Did you hear? Did you read Matthew Reznor's comment? He said, I got my email from you guys this week about Black Widow being pro processed. Both fists spontaneously went in the air. I'm looking forward to this wave of regular scheduled releases, and I'm convinced that my Marvel Champion subscription from you guys is the best gaming decisions I've ever made in my life. Put it on a marketing banner, man. Print is it. The, Thank you, screen, Matthew. Is the screen back? Tell how, me if it's back. Okay. How do I know that? Well, the, the chat will let us know. We're back. Okay, so what happened was, I know what happened. Uh, Jonathan needs to know what happens. Oh, look at that rain. Man, it's pouring outside, guys. Let's chat uh, Chat. Let's chat with folks for a second before we dive into this one. I need to do a little tech work back You're here. You're good. I'm just looking at all these crazy units. And I'm going to chat. Uh, oh, huh? Zen Trickster says, I do have another dial. You have the Can I have that yeah, dial? Yeah, yeah. Is this the... Is, yeah. this, is this the one? Nope, that's not the one. I, I'll find this one. It. This one. This one. Yeah, it's the weird dial. Yeah. So this lets me each turn I get to choose one of these factions, and then I can basically play faction units from that faction during that turn. But I think I have to choose that at the start of the turn, right? Oh yeah, I remember that. So you have a bunch of different units in your thing. Yeah, I remember that now. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. It's, um, it's, so check this out. Mark says it's raining in Toronto. Uh, Kaya says uh, pouring here in Ontario. And then David Devin says it's also pouring in Kansas City. Uh, ah, I got it right. During the HQ phase, so at the end of the round, I choose a faction, and then going to the next round, I can play those units. Play those units. Can you tell? Hey, Bryce, I've got a message for you on the on the out of shot computer, the, our secret workstation over here, where Bryce is pulling up cards from the other side. Can you restart the computer that you're pulling pops from? My guess is that the transparency layer turned black, uh, and that's what caused that issue. So I don't know, maybe a reboot or something. Hold on, let's let's do a little. John John Miller asking, any chance you guys can do Seventh C and or Warlord Throwback Thursday? We may have both of those games in the house. So I you... can't wait. I want to play Seventh C. You so never bad. know I love when, stuff. when it's going to show up. Mattia says we ha we've had snow until last week here in northern Sweden. I want to visit Sweden someday. Andre says it's humid and overcasting. Quebec. John says, woo, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Jesse Hulk says, 7th C is so good. Kaya also says, excited about 7th C. Apparently, it's a beautiful sunny evening in the UK, uh, says Mark. That's amazing because the UK is not known for its beautiful sunny weather. The apparently, sunny is like a, a rare enough event that it's almost like a thunderstorm in Oklahoma. It's like, Oh my gosh, it's a sunny day. It's a sunny day. And then we people all better lose, go outside. And people lose their minds. All right, I'm going to turn this layer back on and see if it is good or bad. Nameless saying VTES, which is Vampire, the Eternal Struggle, and Doomtown yeah, Reloaded. Forever, yep. Right? Those Everybody are, talking those about are on that. the list. Everybody talking about that. Okay. Tobin says, enjoying a cigar on my front porch. Is it raining there? Because oh that sounds gosh, like an amazing I'm time. Take advantage of that. You, you do it. <laughs> we, we are on a forced <laughs> break. Try to take on Rhino while I'm gone. Yeah, I'll be I'll be playing three sessions of Rhino while Steven's out of here. Uh, Andre Sand, have either of you played any Doom Time Reloaded? Yes, definitely played it. I played it a lot when we came out. We created a decent number of videos for it. And then uh, ultimately for me, the thing about Doom Time was I felt like I was going to get into a uh, like tavern, bar, fight, g shootout, western game. And then it really started to feel like it was more of a titles and deeds land management game, um, which is not necessarily bad. It's just not the game I was looking for, and it was a lot. Like I think once you get in on Doomtown, you, you it's like potentially as good as it gets. But like uh, it just at a certain point was too much for me. I really like the deck building with the poker values on the cards, um, but uh, I've heard nothing but great things about it. So I, I get it. Darren saying, hello, I came to you for Star Wars Destiny the Master Tournament tournament, and had a great time. Hey, Darren, that's awesome. Uh, thanks for coming, and I uh, was glad to have you here. Kai says, I've watched all your Doomtown videos, but you can never find it locally. Yep. I've heard that the, there's a community group doing a really great job with that game. So if you're interested in Doomtown, check that out. Brian says, look at the Eldar unit that is expensive. What do you mean by expensive? Like five? 
out there with all of their windows down. Is it a Toyota? <laughs> it's not mine, no. It is not mine. Oh, man. Hey, I was thinking, I was in the bathroom. That's dangerous, dude. Do you, want any, do you need any coffee? Um, I've had, we probably shouldn't. Uh, what, what do you guys think about this? So the thing that I really enjoy when games basically have a structure, as you might expect, that is very much uh, tidy, controlled, let's say. So an example of this in Conquest, like if I would make a change, and it would have to change the way that the cars are designed, but it would just be the simple system that you get an action, I get an action, right? Mm -hmm. And that action can be using an action on a unit. It can be attacking with that unit. It could be uh, you know any other ability that uses an action. But basically, so we don't have... I think one of the things in games that is the least good for me is whenever you have timing windows where people can play over and over and over again. So like if it was like... All right, it's my turn, I get an action. I can attack with a unit, or I can play a card out of my hand, or I can use an action ability on the board. I do it, and then it passes over to you. You can attack or use an action, passes back to me. Like, Destiny does that, right? Yeah. And most well, of the... Most of the time. Most, yeah, exactly, right? But when Andre, it doesn't, it woo. feels weird, right? <laughs> so I love that about games and game systems. If I was, like, designing a system, it would always be... There's always a one unit being passed back and yeah. forth. I think if I... Uh, if I had, I was. I actually have more than one complaint. I was gonna say if I had anything, any complaints about Netrunner as a system, it's the reality that you have three or four in a row. So like once you go one and one, you can't have those weird corp just murder you. Sec like they can still murder you. That's true. But it's yeah. gonna be a little more choreographed in terms of like, all right, you're tagged. Are you gonna do anything? Back and forth. Yeah. It just ups the tension. It also reduces the complexity. But the. Uh, the other thing about a Netrunner is the agenda flood, which is just a natural sure. problem of the system. But my favorite games, uh, Destiny being one of them, it, the moments when you have one action, one action, one action, one action, it's just so it interactive. It ratchets up, yeah. And, and every just... action, there's tension um, versus like, you know, you, we've all played those games where I'm sitting there for 10 minutes while you take your turn, and then you're sitting there for 10 minutes while I take my turn. And so, like, uh, it's just the exact opposite of that, that kind of a moment. Yeah. So we should, uh, let's just uh, make sure that all games do that, right? Uh, let's see. The, someone's saying, what's the deal with the 11th planet? We have the 11th planet. Is it out right now? Maybe it's this one. Nectivus? Because these all say Nectivus on the back. The battle for Nectivus. So this is probably mm. the weird one, right? Force reaction after the HQ phase begins, deal four damage to each unit of this planet. So it's a big command planet. You win it, you get a lot, but then everything dies at it. Basically, ah, oh, so Nectivus. it's probably really good with the these Necrons. Yeah, Nectivus is the eleventh planet. So, do we want to just swap in a normal one, or do we want to just use it? Does it come into play when someone's playing as this faction? Is that what that means? You shuffle it in? Oh, maybe. Oh, it was a fan oh, made one. Yeah, of we can we can we can. Toss okay, it. cool. Go or ahead. we can use it. Let's use it. All right, we, we're doing it. Shout to Fire Chicken. Uh, is the card you were having me look at, uh, Ryan? Just so I make sure I'm reading the right one. The Shrieking Exarch. Don't worry about it, Steven. What is this combo, guys? Am I going to get pantsed on camera? Is somebody going to pants me? We're using it. I just want to see if Ryan wanted me to read a specific card, and I think this might be it. I also will zoom my I, I want to ask you guys, is there anything? So I know a lot of Conquest players here on the chat. Have you guys found uh, games that are kind of scratching this itch? Um, anything that's not, it's not going to be comparable, right? It's like when people ask me, hey, have you found anything to replace Netrunner? It's like, never. Uh, but what, what have you branched into after Conquest? Anything that's been, uh, been satisfying for you? I'd love to know. Because, like, this was great. Netrunner was great. It was, you know, we, we kind of snuck into a bit of a, a great era when we were into these particular games. Conquest, Thrones. Netrunner? I can't leave out. It's like naming all your kids. I forgot Johnny again. Well, i got to go back to the store. Zen Trickster, I hoped L5R would be, but sadly no. Yeah, L5R didn't do it for me either. No one, nothing, not even close. Um, prototyped a game this week. Oh, Kaya, go for it. Colin saying nothing has come close. Isn't that how we feel about like the games that really hit for us always? It's just like, well, hard to beat. 
It's not, it's not for me, it's like it's not Netrunner, so no, it's not as good as Netrunner. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Now, do I have to set this die out the first of the game? And if so, any recommendations on the symbol I'm looking for? Uh, Probably based on my opening hand. Ryan said the thing that I absolutely hate hearing. Zach, there's a way to kill Warlord in deployment phase. I'll figure that out. Draw seven. Sounds like, sounds like a fun game amongst friends, doesn't it? Uh-huh. Garbage. 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 Matt Klein, I only played co-op LCGs after Conquest until Transformers. It's quicker and just as brutal without the complexity of the resource phase. I would say it's a, it's a lighter version, yeah. It's not dissimilar, really. Look at the cards in your hands. I mean, I guess Run it kind of is. The combat is somewhat similar. So this form is a sneaky little good game. It is sneaky good. It's just a good little system. Yeah, it really they, is. They weren't trying too hard. A lot of games try too hard. Do you want to transform? They're trying to do too many things in one system. Makes it really complex, yes. Don't make that mistake, Kai, if you're designing that game. What up, Dave B? Welcome. Uh, this is game two, but uh, you should be able to follow along. If you have questions, feel free to ask. There's a lot of great people on chat that know how to play. And and this is going to we'll be, be a playing. strange game because Zach's playing some sort of weird combo deck that he pulled out of the ether. Knights of the Stars, how's all TC doing? Uh, pretty well, all things considered. We're doing pretty well. A little isolated. Haven't seen most of the team for a while outside of the old Zoom meetings. <laughs> but I think we're all holding up. Everyone's safe. Everyone's healthy. That's the most important thing. And then uh, we're figuring our way through this whole thing. Okay, so let me look at what I'm going to do. Ooh, got the alt art void pirate up in the house. I don't have void pirate in my hand. Don't worry about it. Does uh, n these things that m reduce cost that doesn't work during the deployment phase? Yeah, like this initial phase. Like if I have something that reduces, it doesn't. Oh, reduce. it definitely works on this phase. You play it. And then the next, that's a card play. And then, like, the reduced by one card? Yeah. Yeah, it's like it a... It works in this... Do you remember, like, Eastern Fife Them in Thrones? This isn't set up. This is turn one. Turn one is play a support, your opponent goes. Oh, yeah. Reduce, it's just like the Eastern Fife Them. Yeah. Huh. Okay, well, that's... Uh... Oh, yeah, I need to look and see if there's any fun factions. Okay, I need Space Marines. Space Marines is the... Yes, the skull with the wings and the sword. That's what my dial's on. That's what I can play from. Okay, I will take note of that and adjust my strategy accordingly because I have knowledge of everything in that faction that you might be hitting me with. I understand, yeah. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine. These alt art uh, rogue traders and void pirates are bizarre. She's got a giant hat. Are we playing, we're playing in the same direction, yeah? Yeah, left or right. Your right to my left. My right, even though I'm going first. So it's yeah. going to be a little non-standard. That's fine. We're just going here. This is number one. So you basically know. we've got red, red, red win. Remember, you're the first green, player. Green, green, green win. Player. Blue is a non-issue. Yeah. Blue can't win currently with what's on the table. You know how I feel about my red plans. All right, I'm going to read through the battle days real quick. We're going to target non-warlord units so you can send someone home. It's awesome That's on the first very planet, powerful. actually. Yeah. Uh, anything here at the HQ phase dies. It uh, just takes four damage. doesn't necessarily die. Uh, if you control fewer units than your opponent, gain three resources, draw three cards. Very powerful. Hmm. Uh, this is discard a card at random from your opponent's hand. Very powerful. And this is remove all damage from a target unit. Commanders are units, for reference. There you go. <laughs> they sure are. Alex says, Zach and Steven, top three LCGs. Arkham. Android Netrunner, obviously, is number one. Arkham. Hmm. For me, Game of Thrones, first edition. There's too many memories with that game to not say it. Conquest is right, right there, man. Whew. It just, it, <laughs> so good. It, it left us so early. Yeah, it lit, before it's time. A fire that burned too bright. <laughs> uh, Netrunner is definitely number one, Un unquestionable. Even for you, I'm surprised. Yeah, That's good. It's just the, I mean, objectively best game in the LCG category. I, I, I don't disagree. Can't can't dispute it. <laughs> now, is it like objectively best or the ones that we had the most fun playing? Most fun. You got to choose three too, by the way. Oh, I know. Are you going to choose Star Wars LCG, by the way? I don't know. I don't. 
I don't know. We need to play it again because I don't know if my I had like rose colored glasses on. Mm -hmm. So like I love that game and I love the community around that game. But that was also the first Star Wars card game since the Wizards Heartbreak in the early 2000s that yeah. I played. So like I was anxious for a new Star Wars card game. Absolutely. Um, and it, it, it was in the Eric Lang phase. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> yeah, I was in, it was in the Eric Lang phase. So like it was the zone of game we were in, but I need to play it now to know what I think of, about it because the, the memories are strong for that. Same with Thrones 1.0. Like at the time, it was insanely amazing, super fun. And I mean, it was, an, it was broken every every yeah, way. Yeah, but, but it was so fun, and we yeah. had we had like a really insanely awesome local slash regional community. Yeah. We had twenty thirty people weeklies for Thrones back in twenty thirteen. That was awesome. Uh, and then we had a, the Missouri crew was not that far away, and they had two world champions that played there, mm -hmm. and so like they would come down, and then the Texas crew would come up, and then. Kyle Vance would come down. Or Arkansas too. The Arkansas, yeah. The dad um, and the, yeah, the yeah. kids. Yeah, yeah. Um, man, on the spot. Not gonna try to find the names here. I'm gonna don't keep do thinking. It. Just but don't I'm even not do it. Be on don't the spot. even think about it. Um, definitely Netrunner number one. Uh, then contentions for me. I'm recently falling in love with Arkham. It, if it were a theme, I was more like obsessed with. I think as a game design, it's 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 probably actually on the same level as Netrunner uh, for me. Mm. But the theme is just not. 100%. Like, Netrunner is a theme I'm closer to. But then, like, Star Wars LCG is a theme I'm really close to. But then the game... I have complaints about all the games, so it's it's hard to say. Don't we all? We hate things about our kids. Just kidding. Maybe not. I don't have them. <laughs> Fire Chicken says, Zach, remember the Shield Trench Run win? How can it not be in the top three? <laughs> okay, are you ready? I guess. Any way to draw cards? Nope. Uh, you got what you got. Uh, I'm the first player. I'm going to start with a Bone Singer Choir for two. So, and then that's going to, when I deploy a vehicle or drone, I can exhaust or reduce the cost by two. All right. I'm going to play a Sadika Complex for one. It's limited. After I deploy a unit from a non-Necron faction, if I control no other units from that faction, gain a resource or draw a card. Mm. Seems good. Nah. Uh, can you take a combat action if the unit isn't at a planet that combat is taking place at? Like, for instance, if there's a combat action here and combat is happening here, can I use I this? I don't think so. Probably but not. We'll let chat tell us in a second. John says, do you think Netrunner will be back again? <sighs> it's weird. It's a weird web uh, because Wizards designed the game originally, Richard Garfield. FFG licensed it and put their Android universe on top of it, but the version of the game that they made is probably somehow tied to them. It's kind of in a weird phase. If, if Wizards, Wizards would have to either do it or license it to someone, and it's possible that they could, um, but who's to say, really? Okay. Bob, Warhammer Invasion was just a little bit before our time. I've got a yes and a no on combat actions on a planet where there's no combat taking place. Ryan says you can take combat action anywhere. I trust it. I mean, I would believe, because the way some of these cards work, I think that does make sense. All right, well, what do you think about uh, Vasha Trailblazer there? Mobile, so at the beginning of the combat phase, that can move left or right. All of that. So I can get off of that planet that's going to blow me up. It's time to go mobile. Oh, I'm going to blow you up. Uh, let's put a rogue trader down at Iridial. Just hanging out. Good looking rogue trader, man. He's a full, full, full bleedy. <laughs> Dab Time says, this stream is like an extended podcast episode. <laughs> That's pretty much what most of the streams have become. It's like a mixture of gameplay plus podcast discussion, uh, but also adding in the audience interaction. Like, I love being able to interact with chat. That's just uh, uh, both in, because it's isolation and like being able to just talk to people is good. But then also, it's just really cool to actually like interface with the people that are normally you're only on like forums or Facebook groups with. Okay, okay, we got to think. I don't I have no idea what you're doing. You're putting a rogue trader over there. I know that. What does my guy do? Commits to a planet, exhaust a unit at that. Oh, cool! I can exhaust you. Boo. <laughs> uh, uh. You remember in Thrones when they gave one house cards, resources, and tap your opponent and can't do intrigue challenges? I do remember that. 
Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, let's do um, Wild Rider Squadron. What up, Eclectic? Here, I have a hypothetical Here for you. for minus two. Yeah, because he's a v vehicle. He's a vehicle. He can uh, take a combat action to move to yeah. an adjacent planet. So you, have, you would love this list. Yes, I would. It's all adaptability and movement. Yep. So, like, that's where my complaint would be. Like, you remember when you don't have to actually commit to where your stuff's going to go and you just kind of get to adapt as the game unfolds? And it's That really would be fair? annoying. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be especially annoying if they could move uh, during the command phase, but they cannot. But they right. cannot. Let's think about this. This is cool, Chris. Uh, Chris Hodevec saying, Arkham is not only the best game, but it got me into the mythos, and I can't get enough of it. It led me to the Stranger Things, the Void, Endless, the Color Out of Space, Lovecraft's works, among others. I definitely appreciate it way more than I used to, uh, and I really love Stranger Things. Yeah. That, that, was a, that was right on the line for me of creepy that I'm cool with. All right, let's. You got one resource left. Yeah, I'm gonna make your life. Not I played so three fun. things. You played two. Uh, Void pirate. Void pirate. That's the plus. Uh, plus one card. card one, yeah. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm okay. What about that first planet, though? How about that first planet, though? It's good. Um, yeah, um, John says, Arkham is such a good game that it's my number one, even though the theme does nothing for me. What if we... Uh, you're a combo. Combo wombo. I, I don't know what you're talking about, dude. <laughs> Let's put uh, let's put a rogue trader here. Uh -huh. <laughs> I declare bankruptcy. Oof. All right, uh, let's play another void pirate. Woo! There they go. There they pass. go. There they go again. All right, I will also pass. Unfortunately, where'd my dial go? You got a dial? You take my dial? Nope. You did. Yep. Oh, you have to have both? This is my oh, set. So I've got to use this weird one. You've been using that one, though, right? I know. I was going to use a normal dial because I had the chance. Uh, um, OK, and then the, the combat stuff, there's all sorts of weird stuff that can happen here. You go to that planet, you get blowed up, which maybe is fine with you. I don't know. I don't know how this works. We both just go to five and call it a day. You've got too much invested there for me to hop there and and not win. <clears throat> okay, well. So if you do go here, then you would win that anyway, yeah? Yeah. Which would be good. It would be good. But if you don't go there, well, oh, the game is afoot, my friend. The even, game is afoot. Let's not even think about that. You have to ask what kind of player I am, and you know what kind of player I am. Mm hmm. All right. All right. I'm on it. I'm ready. This one goes to 11. But this one goes to 11. All right. What do you got? Four. Two. Whee! Don't mind me. Exhausted. All right, so we do command. I get this because I'm a warlord. You did it. Two resources, two cards. Boom. Don't it feel great? Wild Rider wins here. One card, one resource. Win here. Two cards, one rogue trader resource. I win here. Two cards and one resource. I'm in the cards. Now let me read all of these cards that I just got. My Are these your actual resources? Lord, What's yes. That story? This, that's real resources. Okay. When I spend them, I put them so off, spent the, three, off yeah. the map. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, all 
Are we ready to begin the combat phase? Sure. All right. Vash is going to move over here at the beginning of the phase. OK. Um, I'm going to, do I have an action window here? Is that I what? don't know. Tell me, someone, do I have an action window? At the beginning of the combat phase, this is all going to happen. And then there's probably a pre-combat window. Do you have the, the book or anything? Uh, Tobin says yes. Yes, everyone's saying yes. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm going to play Recycle. What does that do? Discard two cards from my hand, then draw three. OK. Let me make sure that's right. No, I'm not going to do that yet. Kay. Sorry. Don't recycle anything. Mm. Reduce, reuse. Okay, we're good. Uh, first planet. I win. You get to route someone. Route a not a target non warlord unit. Now the the combat happens, and I might want to move something over. Nah, that's gonna die anyway. That doesn't matter. New to an adjacent planet. I don't. I don't really need that, honestly. Well, I could stuff that void pirate. That's worth something, I reckon. I also kind of wanted to bail for Nectivus, honestly. Uh, okay, so not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna win this. Okay. I'm gonna route a unit. It's gonna be. Uh, This Void Pirate. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. And then uh, Trailblazer comes home. All right. We go to the battle here? Yeah. I'll retreat. I don't want to take anything. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter. Uh, Wild Ride doesn't matter. Battle here, discard a card at random from your hand. A Royal... A phylactery. 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 That makes sense. English. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? OK, and then we're done? We done. So then is the HQ phase. Anything matter there? Draw, draw uh, cards, Things, things do matter. So again, resources, draw cards, and then I have to set my dial. I come back here, yeah. And then we reveal this. Uh, I'm gonna do you know shoot. this before you set your dial? Does the when does the planet get revealed? Do you think? I don't know. Probably. But it's not going to change my choice. Probably right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> I wish I did. I'm going with the skull, regular skull, not the creepy orc looking skull. Oh yeah, I could have killed that void pirate. That's right. I forgot that That's I got right. to kill stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah let's gonna, do that. Kill yeah. that one and send the other one. Yeah. Home, yeah. So this comes home and then you punch mm -hmm. that. Yeah. All right. Now, how much were you punching for? Two. Over and over and over again until. It works. Well, as long as I get to the end of the first okay. volley, yeah, sure. I could retreat. T1. So let me think. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> they did. Okay, and then we get four resources apiece, and then we get two cards, yeah? Yeah. I don't think I've drawn yet. I don't know. And then this fascinating system. stuff. Man, this is a kind of an interestingly hard deck to play. I've got to be honest with you. Lanky Rat saying, new camera looks fabulous. Nice work, gents. Hey, thank, thank you so you. much. Huge shout out to our content members and subscribers for allowing us to be in a position to make those upgrades. He only hits for one if you want to shield for one. Oh, I will definitely do that. And then retreat it. Yeah, thank you, Fire Chicken. I was, I was thinking it was the last, last Warlord. Uh, we'll discard a fallback. Done. Okay, so then you get a Void Pirate back at home. Yeah. Double the Void Pirate, Woo! double the fun. So where you go... Plus two you cards. You get plus two cards, yeah? Mm-hmm. If I win it. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. All right, well... And it's your uh, first player. Let's play another uh, Satika Complex. Sat... -uk. How do you say that? Mm, Sawtech. Sawtech? Sawtech. 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 This here? <clears throat> this here breaks me. <laughs> it's 
It's only funny if you know it. Mm, yeah. Um, Necrons are weird. I mean, this is just so non-interactive right now. It's driving me insane. Yeah, because I'm not doing anything. I'm just... You're not doing anything. Oogla boogla. You're not doing anything. I feel oogly boogly indeed. Yeah. Can you guess what he's... <laughs> Fire Chicken says, I believe it's pronounced Necron Recycle Pit. <laughs> Okay, what am I gonna do? I mean, I don't even know what I'm. Sam, limited means you can only play one limited card per phase. You don't know what you're gonna do. It's a great problem for me to have for you. I don't know what's happening. You know what I mean? I don't know what's happening. Um, with the same icon. Okay, yeah, I got that. There's just a lot of uh, interesting, uh, what do you call them, cards here. And what have you? Uh, being in the combat, they can move to an adjacent planet. Okay, that that uh, that's good there. Look at these void pirates just being ballers. <laughs> that hat just gets me in they the giant gun. They look absolutely great. Ugh. All right, let's play. Uh, let's play a star cannon here. It's going to ignore armor. Where's armor in the game? Does it say armor on the cards if they have armor? I'm just stalling. I just want to play What's zero cost What's to see what you're doing. I assume armor doing. is like a, a keyword that reduces damage. Yeah, armor one, armor yeah, two. Yeah, like you've seen it. I don't think you're, you, you don't seem like the kind of guy that's playing cards that use normal game mechanics. Just put these in fest tokens this is up the, here. Mm, I like okay. these. We did a good job of these. We did a good job. <laughs> we did a good uh, job. <laughs> so I'm going to play. Uh, oh, it ignores shields. It ignores shields. There it is. That makes yeah. sense. That's what you want. You want it on here because you want to ignore shields. That's a weird. Why don't they call it Shield Bane? All right, I'm gonna play the Penal Legionnaire. He's from the faction that I picked. I can use both my complexes here. After I play a unit from a non Necron faction, if I control no other units from that faction, I can either gain a resource or draw a card. Mm -hmm. Let's draw two. Draw two. Okay, cool, fun. So he's a prison man. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Only in death shall my crimes be forgiven. He's number 27, side note. Hmm. Just a little zero cost guy. Just a little zero cost guy. Why not? Hmm. <clears throat> Do you have a discard pile yet? No. All right, great. You haven't done anything. Great. Water well, squadron at minus two over here on the on the old rogue trader. I guess I'll pay for that. Just doing. Yeah, some Jared money. on Twitch. Great, great conquest memories for sure. All right, let's play. Oh, does it exhaust? Does it actually exhaust? After you deploy a unit, if you control, no, it doesn't exhaust at all. You can do that forever. Steven is checking out of this game. <laughs> what? <laughs> but I have to, if I, it only works if I don't have another unit of that thing in play. So I'd have to be able to get rid of I that just, unit. I see what's happening here. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> so Zach is going to try to do something completely opposite of anything I'm trying to do. And I'm going to try to do what I do, which is the normal game, faster than you can pull off whatever 20 cards in your hand that you need. I'm going to go get some water. You can think about the novel that you got to put together there. Yeah, Sylvia Platt. Uh, you want any water? Beer I'm okay. Anything? I would I would take a... Is it beer 30? Yeah, I think it is. It's 3.30, which is actually beer 30. That's right. Uh, That's right. Just get... I, I ran into this one over here so many times. Whatever you want, the, the fancy glass. All right. So, Recycle seems good. Because I have a bunch of resources, so I'm looking for anything. And I want to put the Piranha Eternals on my discard pile. Uh, so that I can play cards from my discard pile. I wish I could... Uh, I, I think I see what I'm trying to set up here. So, uh, save recycle. Why why should I save it? To like discard a card that I can play from discard pile for some reason? I need the elder unit. Elder unit. Are they 
they tell you how to do the combo yet? Uh, I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> but cheers to learning. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying this. This has been a good one. After flying solo yesterday, Stephen had a mattress delivered, so he had to go. After flying solo for a couple hours yesterday, I realized how much more fun it is when you actually get to play across the table from someone. You're right. That's why we're here. All right. Well, I'm going to listen to my consultants. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, you, I, you know I completely I mean. do. It's All right. Let's, let's do this. I I'm going to play a rogue say. trader here. Mm. Wow. Really a fancy uh, uh, move there. This is Cheers. the Native, native Amber. Amber yeah. Cheers. Cheers. It's made with Oklahoma mud. What do you have? Or F5. Mm. Yeah, you can keep riding down that F5. So it's we basically one of the best side note, in the country. We we usually have four uh, Oklahoma beers on tap in store, and our store's been closed since March. So at some point, it's like, well, beer's gonna go bad. it's gonna go bad. So so we do keg stands after every one of these uh, streams. It would be amazing <laughs> if like the Instagram story that went up after this is like me upside down. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hilarious. Okay, did you do something or you did something? It was just immaterial trader. to yeah. the game. Okay. More rogue traders. Do you have other cards? See you, Red Note. I appreciate the comment. I have mm. six cards in my hand. Mm. So you do, so you do. <clears throat> okay. I got that. All right. <laughs> Understood. Okay and okay. Um, Gains mobile. It's time to go mobile. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in it. The <laughs> Bane cat for everyone that doesn't know what I'm talking about. Okay, so this play is off the table. This art is insane. Look at Planum. That's I, great. I That's love beautiful. that, dude. That's beautiful. Okay, let's throw the drone defense system here. Attach to a vehicle, exhaust it to deal two damage to each exhausted enemy unit at this planet. So basically, at the kind of last moment, once everything's exhausted, I can combat action over and then exhaust it to do two to everything exhausted. That's something I both love and hate all at once. That yeah. They introduce that. Yeah, well. It makes my brain hurt. That's. In a lot of ways, that's the story of Warhammer Conquest, isn't it? Am I right? Am I right? Yeah, Dysphoria, we didn't do any deck building today uh, because we just had the decks from Ryan, and these are pre-built and ready to go. There's some cards in here, but it's just like Orcs and Necrons and Tyranids. All right, I'm going to play... Which uh, are actually the three things I'm, I'm the least into in all of Warhammer. So there they are. <laughs> uh, the Pyrian Eternals. Two costs, one command icon. They get plus one, plus one for every one of those cards in my discard pile, which is currently zero. But if I can get you some... that recycle card there. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. Okay. Oh, wait, I didn't pay for the thing. Uh, one. <clears throat> All right, well, you don't have a lot of resources over there. Play the shrine. After a move to a place, I can exhaust to ready the thing that moved. Okay. It's like watching a child learn to walk. Let's play Warriors of Gidrim. It's a little one cost, one icon guy. Gains commands icon while you have two or more non Necron factions among you to control. Only got one. Is neutral not a faction in this one? It's not a faction. Uh, and a, a warlord is not an army, right? No. If I'm, I've never been more sure of anything in my life. This is so strange. Um, okay, I'm going to pay two for the Saimhat. No, wait, maybe I just don't play anything. Ah, because it's also shields. Done. Pass. Move. I'll also pass. <laughs> to the dials, Batman. <laughs> to the dials. This is a cool. Uh, this is a cool part of the game. All right. So where do I go? You've got all sorts of nonsense here, right? It's just two little guys. 
At what point is the battle won? Is it whenever there are no enemy units and everything's exhausted? You make it to the end. So, like, if there's nothing for me to attack... You tend to be tap everything, and then the battle... Is that right? No, because then you'd have a chance to, like, drop something in after I've tapped. That's the idea, yeah. But you would have to, like, have things there that make me tap to attack. Okay. If you wanted to bring him in after I was tapped. So any time you would attack and there's nothing left to attack, you would win. Basically, if there's nothing to attack, I don't tap to attack. And we right. go to the end, everything readies, the battle wins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Both players pass on combat actions is when the battle is done. Yeah, so you don't have to attack. So, like, if there's nothing there for me to attack, I pass. Yeah. You, if you pass, I win the battle. Then I could bring something in, yeah. Okay, I, I got it. I got it. I got it. John, appreciate you being here. Glad you dig it. Okay. <clears throat> what I, are you going to put your your warlord over here? Could. Okay, I'm ready. I've done it. I'm ready. Wait, I haven't actually said it. Okay, I'm ready. I said it, but I'm not sure that it's true. Yeah. Okay. One. Five. He's going downtown. Downtown. So this happens. Um, I'll go ahead and, I guess, after a unit moves to a planet, I can exhaust her radiant. It won't matter. No, it will here, actually. It will. I'll get my. I'll get an attack. All right. Mm -hmm. Command? Command, yes. Two and two for Steven. Yep. One, two. Oh my gosh, I remember that card being so good. One and one. I've got two to your one. You got it. I get two cards and a resource. You've activated my trap card. Nothing here. Tied. I get three cards and a resource. Woo! Everything is going exactly as I have foreseen. Oh yeah, Warlord ability. Uh, tap this thing. Those lights are a problem. <laughs> Now, let me read my s stack of cards. Hold on. Hmm. 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I hate whatever deck you're playing so much. <laughs> How is that oh a thing? All right, X-Wing players. If you players. play this in like our local meta, this is why local metas can be so good. I'd just be like, I'm not playing you. <laughs> you get paired in tournament. I scoop. I'm scoop. not, not going to let you I'm play doing it. it. You can't play Charizard anymore. You're winning too much. Fire, says, Fire Chicken says, I may be rebuying Conquest for the third time after watching this stream. <laughs> Hot and you're cold. I mean, it's, it's good. I got Katie pretty far. I, I, I feel like... The thing I'm getting more and more into is remembering that when we were kids, there were two to four of us discovering a game together. Mm -hmm. And that little group's meta mattered so much. But then also recognizing when going back to play all these old games, like the Middle Earth CCG is a great example of like, my intent is to have like five or six decks that are built yeah. that are thematic and equally good. That's the idea. And it's like, that's it, basically a cube. You're, right? just, you're just playing with that and you're just exploring the game and having a good time instead of like min maxing and running the. the, the Brutal, just. But what really happened? Let's let's talk about it. Really, what really happened? There was three to four of us playing, and somebody pulls the the rare such and such out of the pack, and then dominates everybody for the next month. And then eventually, either somebody figures out an, a a solution to the problem, or they pull the cards that they need, or they just say, "Hey, Brad, Stop you just can't that run that deck yeah. anymore." And it gets boring <laughs> after yeah. a time. Uh, the, a good example of this for me was back in the Thrones early days when Comstock had that. Martel Maester's deck, mm -hmm. and it was like literally a year later, eighty-five percent of his deck is restricted. Mm -hmm. So you, yeah, you, right. There's literally forty cards in the deck that you can't run with any of the other cards in the deck after yep. a year because yep. it was that good. And it's like but, no wonder he was winning so much. But All the cards there are was busted. like two months where the whole community, twenty people every week, their goal was to be Comstock. Yeah, that's true. For all, and it was great. It was like a royal rumble. It was like a the belt match. It's basically. like all right, who's and finally when someone took Comstock down, it was like everyone was excited. No offense, Comstock, you're a wonderful person. Yeah, um, but when you finally do go down, we'll all be very happy. Parker asking, have you guys ever played the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures games? Thoughts also by Acclaim. I, I demoed it at uh, uh, Gen Con many years ago. I actually have it, so it's possible it ends up on stream at some point. 
But I see trades, I run. Well, That's just how I am. The thing about it is, it is doing what Legion did, except for it's with trays, which is like you move one thing and it moves all the things, mm -hmm. which is better. The thing I like the most that they did is all the rules texture on the cards. So yeah. there's no 200 page rule book for a miniatures game. But it's is like, it also the kind of thing you get to sit down across from an opponent, you gotta read 16 no. paragraphs to keep it in? It's like every unit has one thing going on. That's, that's the way everything should be. And it's like, also, it's like, every, there's not like weird like range and line of sight and things. It's like, these are ambushers. If they're in cover, they get a bonus. That's not anyone else. It's really okay. only if this is what they do, this is what happens. Okay, so, I'm in. Anyways. People are loving uh, Song of Ice and Fire also. That, that's one that I didn't know if it was going to like, I thought it might just uh, fizzle out, but uh, it has grown. It's, apparently it's, it's doing well. It's doing what games need to do to survive. Expandable games, right? Like Which real is, games. You find your audience, mm -hmm. and then you create great content, and you just slowly keep making it better and keep adding players. Why is it only miniatures games that seem to be able to do that? Aside from obvious examples being Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, well, but it, you feel like with card games, if it doesn't hit in the first six months, it's dead. I think part of it is because there's the hobby element, mm -hmm. which is people usually buy in to like have an army of like. As an example, this is why I'm interested at all. Is like you can have a Targaryen army. Right. For me, the Targaryen army is all the Dothraki horse lords, and it's like that would be cool to paint. And you only need to play it like twice to ever make it worth actually doing that part of the, the hobby. So it's worth buying into even if other people around you aren't playing it. You have something to do. Yeah. It's like having a solo mode for a game. Okay, all right. But um, a card I game understand. is competitive. You have to do it. Also, card games can print much faster. Like miniatures, it takes longer because miniatures are harder to make and whatnot. whatnot. So the, the like card development issues that happen in a game that is a, a card game is a problem. Also with miniatures, it's really easy to print new stat cards yeah. It's hard to print new cards for a card game yeah. and make that legitimate. That's so fair. like okay. if That's you get cool. it wrong, you can kind of just like fix it later. Yeah. yeah. All right. You convinced me. All right, all right, all right. All right. So we did the command yeah, you phase. You guys are right. Um now we go to the battles. Planet one. Oh, are we here now? Yeah, I think so. Oh my gosh. Right. How many cards are you gonna play right now? None. Hmm. I'm going for the uh de deployment phase assassination. Excellent. Don't you love that? Dying when it's not, not even during the fights. Okay, and you're the first player, so you'll have the first activation, the first action, right? So there's a range phase. There's nothing ranged in the, in the, the thing, right? We don't have any range to worry about? That's right. Okay. Also, side note, another thing about Songwise Fire, pretty simple miniatures. Oh, well then I'm in. <laughs> Wait a second. I really was interested in playing it. I like the little board game thing they do where they have the side table the politics, politics yeah. and whatnot. It mm -hmm. seems cool. It, it, I was a little worried it would be uh, a little too heavy, but it seems like people have really taken to it. So good. I mean, something good needs to happen for that IP. <laughs> <laughs> Got him! After that last season, am I right? Star Wars is no better, man. I'm, I don't know. Our favorite things are just... I don't, I don't know which one went worse. They're just punting. They're, they're getting to the five-yard line, and they're punting. I know. It's a, the, I, remember, so, I saw someone post the other day. It was like, you know that Thrones and Star Wars went super bad because we're stuck in isolation and can't do anything else? No one is talking about redoing this. No. Like, re-watching these things. No. Like, not None. a soul. None. Everyone's watching The Office. My gosh. Yeah. Or Avatar, which well, is worth rewatching. Avatar's or fantastic. Or watching for the first time. And it's actually Avatar. Watching Avatar now is great because Sky Tear is in that space. And so it like gives me and in, gets me into the like ah yes into that zone. bending and, and elements. It's great. Yeah, you're right. Mandalorian, yeah, David. Mandalorian saved it. That's the that's the only thing. It was a lifeline. It was like throwing a uh, one of those rescue donuts. What do they call those? I don't think they're called rescue donuts, although they should be now. Uh, the little uh, the circle. David says Avatar is as vanilla as it gets. Steven. David. What's the best flavor of ice? Most people would say the best flavor of ice cream is vanilla. Vanilla or bean. vanilla bean. Actually. I, dude, I don't care. If vanilla is executed perfectly, fantastic. That's all I'm asking for. I don't care if it, you don't have to do a Rocky Road series to make me interested. Stick to the fundamentals. Great story, great script, great characters, great acting if that's a part of it. And then tell a great story. I mean, you don't have to do anything fancy. It's not, you don't have to always throw these bells and whistles at everything. It's like, oh, but there's this crazy twist and now we're in Night Shyamalan. I'm like, just make it good. Blade Runner 2049, great example. Fundamentals, make it great. Are we fighting yet? Dude, Blade Runner 29 is like... I can't believe it. It's I, not vanilla. I can't it's, even talk it's about It's like it. the most sophisticated flavor of ice cream I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, by that I mean like, what is that flavor? It's like one of those like, oh, I know what it is. It's like 
It's so <laughs> fundamentally just you know a, what it is? a great movie. Atmosphere, it's like, setting, cinematography. I would describe it as fresh, like strawberry gelato <laughs> from Italy. <laughs> I, I agree with that. that it's not too like, sweet. It's not too. It's, that's it's just like pretentious enough for me to be like, into. Just <laughs> like, if you've never had gelato from Italy, it's the best thing on the planet. It's it's yes, what ice cream. Libyans. Once you've had it, you know what ice cream was supposed to be. You know what I mean? Yes. Because like you have it, and it, it ice cream can, is like heavy and kind of <laughs> interesting. But like gelato is just like delicious. <laughs> oh, we're talking about Avatar: The Last Airbender. In case there's any confusion, by the way. The movie is, not, like the Avatar with the blue people, that movie, oh. it's fine, but it's that, not, it's fine. It was a, it was a uh, cinematic visual achievement. Yeah, but The Last Airbender, that's one of the greatest stories ever told. That is truly one of the most talent, like t the talent present in that, uh, so good. Right. Now the Avatar Airbender movie is awful, of course, which we all know that, that's why the that pan is the worst movie ever made. Yeah, a little Shyamalan on that one. Probably even worse than Star Wars Episode Nine, and that's saying something. Yeah, I think we may have gotten our wires crossed. It's The Last Airbender, the series. The movie... Oh, yeah. I was like, man, I've never heard anyone pan Avatar. No, The, the Last, Last Airbender, Airbender is recognized as the best, probably the best thing ever it's to be next, animated. Well, to, you know why. It's elemental. Yep. It's got Eastern vibes. Yep. And it's just a beautifully executed hero's journey. It's got a good, yeah, it's got kind of like the whole... fundamental stories. Yeah. It didn't go on too long. It had an intentional arc going on. It also had the thing that makes series great, which is every character you run into is awesome. Yep. Just whatever it is that they do, whether they're a sword master or a master chef Even, or uh, whatever. What's Katara's brother's name? Zuko? No, Zuko's the Zuko's fire. The uh, Katara, oh my gosh, Aang... Uh, he's got the boomerang. <laughs> yeah, hold on, hold on, hold I'll, on. By the end of that show, I love that character. He's so great. Um, I just watched the episode where he needed to find a master, and he found the sword master that he trained with. Mm -hmm. Boomerang, you do Soka. always come back. Sokka. Sokka. Yeah, Sokka, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Sokka. Hey, your dog's named after uh, Appa. Yep, Appa's the dog's name. Now every time I see Appa, I say We say yip-yip yip yip to make him uh, stand up. That sounds a little cruel. <laughs> just to... Blake says, that Zuko story, though. Mm, yeah, Zuko's great. Uh, you attack me, I guess, yeah? Combat action? You got uh, the Warlord, dude. You got the initiative. Oh, I do have the initiative. Oh, well, then I'll attack you. Murder me. I'll allow it. You just let... You, it's something... something. All right. Get dead. Got dead. Okay. I guess... No, I'm just going to move this guy. I'll attack you with my Warlord. Yep. Get dead. Now... You do for one. Hold on. Because now, like, a single shield means I do one. Okay. Let me we just can, look at this. We can keep going there. Let me just look at this. Oh, you know what? Oh, man, why don't those have shields? Why isn't this even more busted? <laughs> nah, we're good. You got him. Dead. Everything ready? Mm -hmm. Retreat as desired. Mm-hmm. We're coming home. I'm coming home. Okay, done. I win. <laughs> it's my favorite game. <laughs> I'm going home. Also, apparently, Mark Hamill played the Fire Lord. Cool. He's uh, a wild kid. Uncle Iro is probably my favorite character in that show. Yeah. Also, is Kichi in Sky Chair. Yeah. In case you didn't know. Old Iro. That whole, uh, the white, uh, white lotus, I think is what it is. You find out at the end. You've seen the whole thing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Just great. All right, uh, battle is resolved. No battle ability to resolve. Moving on to the next battle. The next warlord is here. All right. Battle. You got anything? <laughs> no. I pass. <laughs> All right, so I, I win I guess it. I could put the squadron over here. They Start can move clearing. that far. They just move this unit to an adjacent planet. Mm. Huh. Well, hold on. This is kind of the point of the deck, is it not? Okay. All right. So what does that look like? So you have to, so you'd have to swing twice. I could clear out, I could do six to you potentially, but you've probably got shenanigans. Uh, you're good. That's fine. That All right. Cool. Uh, battle. I win. Move a non-warlord unit I control to a planet of my choice. 
They're all where you want them. You can even move the HQ thing, I think, back to a planet if you want. I think. I think. Yeah. But I think he goes back. He's exhausted when he goes back. Not that it matters. <laughs> Man, I love this. I like just talking to you guys out there. This is really what... This is how we, this is how we solve the isolation <sighs> problem, for now, at least. Somebody said something, and I just refreshed my chat, and I lost it. Did you have a question for Zachary? I moved a rogue trader here. Steven, move the vehicle to Planet 3 so it's set up for next round. Oh, yeah, right on. That's a good idea. Ryan with the good ideas. OK, end of round. End of round. Would you look at that? You get that planet, by the way. Yeah, I do, yeah. That's going to pass to you. I'm just going to move. I'm just going to move. Final planet is Eloth. Hmm. OK, so right. you just can't lose this planet. So you can win on red. I went on that planet, so I'm going to try to win now. That would now would be the time. I have to. We get our resources, and I have to set my dial. Oh, we get more resources. That's more right. money, more problems. Two, three, four. <clears throat> Cards is the name of this game. Oh, Starbane's Council. I remember this unit. This unit is awesome. We're gonna stick with this dial here. Blake says honestly, these streams are keeping me sane. Did you already read that? No. That's awesome. So good to hear. That's a huge reason why we started doing these was we knew for us and for everyone in our community online and both locally, uh, this could be a difficult time of isolation. People aren't getting to play games. People aren't getting to socialize. Um, so happy to hear that's, that's working out. Yeah, I like The Witcher as well, Kyle. Good, not great. Okay. Hey, here we go. Okay. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. All right. Well, how about uh, how about some of this? Picture this. Yeah, how many cards you got? Like a bajillion. All the cards. Yep. Yeah. Um. Uh, game. <laughs> <clears throat> and I've got six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven resources. How about that? Um, you're going to be able to win that however you want. Let's go in here. I have, I have two red, Ryan. I've got, really, I've got two red, and I, I'm just going to try to win here. Don't tell Zach, though. And this is definitely what you're doing. <laughs> Come on now. Maybe he doesn't see it. In your dreams. Hey, Dave B. What's up, Dave B. on YouTube? How are you? Said, I woke up at 5.30 AM just before game two started. It's just good to have some relaxed table talk on in the background, even though I can't remember how this game works. You know, I think that's a lot of it. Um, I actually, so I had to bail on Zach to go retrieve a bed frame that was being delivered to my house yesterday on the stream. And so I popped on the YouTube to watch what it's like to like watch this, which I'd never done before because I've been in it every time. Uh, and then I just left it running. It was nice just to have a little... Uh, Noise in the background? Because it it's like you're at a store, you're at a, a space, it's just humans are around milling about. Um, I, I agree. It's kind of nice. Don't you wish either of our voices were more pleasant? Like something really sultry I, and nice? I feel like I have a, a fine voice. You know what I mean? Average. Very average, yep. Right at average. All right. It sounds let's, different than the way I hear it in my head, too. Your voice, yeah. always. Let's do this. Actually, before I do that, let's do this. For my next trick, I'm going to play a... Legionnaire again. The he's, old penal legionnaire? That's right. He's not... Can't say penal on camera. <laughs> it's not in brand. He's not... I don't have another one of him out, so I got to trigger both of these, and I use them both to draw cards. This right. is miserable. 
<laughs> Have I said that yet? I haven't even done anything. It's like your your friends playing a dwarf deck in Lord of the Rings. It's like, okay, cool. So you're drawing 20 cards. You gotcha. Um, that doesn't seem in the spirit of the game. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so is it is it time? Um, we got two there, and then... Uh, okay, um... Let's go uh, Starbane's Council here. It gets plus three or plus two against uh, exhausted units there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, Warlord's going to be there. All right, I'm going to play Recycle. So I discard two cards, and then I draw three. Now, I did put a Pyrian Eternals in my discard pile. Mm -hmm. I have one out, so he gets plus one, plus one for every one of these over here. Mm -hmm. Just remember that. Remembered. Consider it remembered. How many of those are in the deck? What's the limit? Oh, is that a signature thing? There's more. I thought there would only be three, and there's more. Okay. Um, let's go. Uh, mm. you, do you mind if I put this here instead? Don't mind. All right. It's just a zero cost guy. Yeah. I just realized what I'm trying to be doing here. Are you stacking a bunch of things up there and no. doing weird stuff? Mm -mm. Uh, three here for the old Wild Rider Viper. I see. You're getting the two red plants stacked up. Well, it's also, it's mobile, and then, so... Let me just look at this. It looks like a little speed racer car. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys ever play, there was an N64 game, I think it was called Zero G, where you were, you were fighting mm. each other in, like, vehicles. It was like a hovercraft, but you had a full 360 maps, so you were flying completely free. Was it called Zero G? Jonathan, if you're listening, we played this game so much. It was a Colin, it was a racing game, but I remember playing the battle mode a lot in multiplayer. My yeah, name. Dayton, we're playing some conquests. Extreme G! Nick nailed it. It was called Extreme G. Zach, it was so good. It was so much fun. Steven, this is just crazy. I think I played Forsaken too. Yeah, it was Forsaken also maybe. All right. I played both of those games. I you love those games. two resources left, eh? I have two left. Let's just do this. All good. Because I know I'm going to. I'm going to play a Void Pirate downtown. Okay. How many are in the deck? Three? I don't know. It's Looks like it. Three, right? And I saw them all. Yeah, it was an F-Zero clone. Champion Red, yes. But it was like, was F-Zero fully 360 or just in space? Going wherever you want, down tunnels. It was so fun. Um, okay, um, there's a bunch of stuff out. Are you uncomfortable yet? Yes. Excellent. I've been uncomfortable the whole time. Attached to an army unit you control. Okay. I'll do that. Attached unit gains mobile. I don't need anything to have mobile. If I pass, I can come back in. Right? Mm -hmm. Did we decide that? Are mm -hmm. you sure about that? Yep. Pass. You can do whatever you like. All right. I... <laughs> There's so much happening. It's unreal. I just... Let's get it on the record, too. I talk about it on the podcast sometimes. I've talked about it variously in, in passing. This is what I don't think should ever happen in a game. Combo players, you know what? Okay, I get it. But let's just make a game for combo players. And everybody can sit there and stare at their cards for 30 minutes and try to string something together that has nothing to do with the game that we're actually trying to play. We'll call it Combo Wombo, and it'll be released as an LCG, and every card will have two paragraphs on it. And you'll have to figure out how to play them in the right order to do something completely degenerate to an opponent that can't have any counterplay. Let's play Drudgery. It's limited. I can exhaust it to put a unit that costs three or lower into play from my discard pile. Okay. Drudgery. From any discard pile. Yeah, my discard okay, pile. Okay, everyone says the game is done. I can't come back. You can't come back? Apparently. Okay. Well, great. That is honestly the most fun thing about games. <laughs> uh, pass. 
All right. I can't come back, Zach. I've lost. Well, let's see if it's that's over. true. The game is over. Oh, I can't come back. By that, you mean you can't play again once you pass. Oh. I knew that. See? Do you want to pass? Yeah, yeah, fine. All right. Pass. Well, then I'm just going to totally go crazy. Thank you, Ryan. That's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, fire chicken. That's hilarious. <laughs> the combo game, shut up and take my money. <laughs> All right. I'm going to play a hunting Atkins Can't stand it. Here. Can't stand Cost it. three. Are and these it, all over here? These are, these, here. these are here. Uh, and each unit with a printed cost two or lower at this plan, it gets minus one health. Okay. He's gone. So minus one health. Mm -hmm. Immediately? To, yep, gone. Okay, gone. Um, then you're, you're out. So let's just keep on keeping. Keep on keeping on. Can you put three of them over there? Do they kill themselves? It's two or less. Cost two or less. Okay. Anything costs two or less. Got it. So I'm going to play a Mystic Warden. He's minus one. But he, I got oh, rid of my other. I thing. remember loving this guy in a, in a. So I get a, I get to use both of these. Didn't he play in my Kotaz deck probably? All right, and then he triggers stuff again. And... Uh, both of these. So I'm going to get. Age of Adam, you're totally right. A resource. And a card, I think. Actually, no. Mm -mm. Let's get two resources. I played against this person in the tournament before. Yep. <laughs> and then I'm going to use Drudgery. <laughs> Feels right, You said it, it man. <laughs> You're using Drudgery to beat me over the head with how much I don't to want play to. To play a whatever externals thing. Oh, no, not yet. i got to wait. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, my this brain. is exactly it, though. <laughs> Wait, no, I can't do that. Yeah, I, like, I, I guess I gotta believe you. I'm gonna I, play. I no I'm gonna idea. play recycle. Cards do. I'm gonna play recycle, so I discard two. I'm discarding two more eternals. So uh -huh. technically, my eternal down here is plus three at the moment. Tell me when I can start tapping my dudes. <laughs> All right. I'll just believe that whatever you say you can do, you can do. I can't read all your cards. Uh, uh, then I'm going to use Drudgery to put a, one of these guys into play for my discard pile. And so there's only... Drudgery's an event. You only do it once. Oh, then I already paid for it. Yeah. I just exactly. didn't use it earlier. So I would have done it now. Okay. Just put him in. Okay. Um, I, I thought it was every turn. Otherwise, that's no way that's worth it. Uh, so then there's two in my discard pile. So then both of these guys just have plus two. Don't mind me. And then, oh yeah, I have this thing. Jiminy Christmas. Help me. Somebody please help me. I see what it's trying to do now. Please. How did it come to this? I'll use this to play action. These are just plus one now to get another one. And then, mm, that's ridiculous. Oh my god. Uh, extermination. Exterminatus. Each non unique, non Necron unit at a target planet here gets minus three health. Okay. Dead. And then uh, this guy, guy goes. Yeah. Warden, yeah. And then I have to pass my next action. You're done? Yep. All right. Cool. Are we going to the command phase? We're going to the command phase. Okay. Guess where I'm going. <laughs> David, the contrast and level of enjoyment between the two of them cannot be greater right now. <laughs> Ryan Chilton, sure it's a nightmare for your opponent, but you get to win. And this is a competitive game, so who cares how your opponent <laughs> enjoys things? <laughs> Super good. <laughs> uh, okay, what do I do here? Uh, oh, wait, we got to the card drawing and resource generating phase, yeah? yeah we got to put our warlord somewhere. Yeah. God, I had gotten lost. <laughs> Is there nothing else? That's it, man. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> the first planet. That's where I'm going. Right? I have to go to the first planet? I don't have to. We don't have to do anything. <laughs> you said it, man. Josh says there's a limited amount of fun, and Zach intends to have all of it. <laughs> <After> <laughs> <laughs> Trying 
to ready that unit. Okay. Um, okay. Matt says with a uh, Transformer CCG getting Wave Five coming out this week, will we get any on stream? It's possible. What's happening this week? The new Transformer sets coming out soon. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, this, I mean, I I, I don't feel. One. I think you can just win. I think so, right? I don't know. That's the weird thing about it, though. It's like you're playing. Uh, you're about to draw seven cards, so like that's a lot of shields and stuff. I don't know. I'm going to one. Where are you All going? Right, I'm going to one. Hmm. So this these come the units come exhausted. Neil, your worst unit, your best unit. Um, he's a one three. I don't I'm gonna do that. this. He's a plus one, plus one on this thing. They're plus one for each of those guys in my discard pile. How many guys are in the discard pile? Currently one, but there's three on the table. So as you kill them, they will get stronger. They'll get stronger. Cool. OK, cool. Cool, cool, uh, cool, cool, cool. Let's kneel one of them. Let's kneel them. Uh, kneel one of them. OK. Yeah. Uh, command phase. I have one icon and a warlord. You have the same? Mm-hmm. OK. I have two here. Got three. You get you get it. Four. Wait, no. I have two. So we tie. Tie. I have two. Three. You get it. Take a card. I get two cards and a resource. Two cards and a money. Yeah, maybe that's right. Fire chicken. I I, I don't know. And then I get three cards. I don't. I just want to win this planet. I don't know what can he do to me. Bloody me is probably the worst. I'm just looking at a world where like I just pop over and do two to everything, and then he doesn't get the bonuses. Are we uh, are you done with the command phase? He would be good. <laughs> oh, I also get a money for the road trader. Wee. Okay, we're good. All right, so beginning of combat, mobile. Okay. Here. All right. Then um, we got the combat phase, and I have initiative. So You're the first player, and your warlord's there, so you have initiative. Okay, so Wild Rider Squadron can do three. To Eclectic something. tomorrow is Arkham. Freaky Friday. You can also exhaust attached unit to deal two to each exhausted enemy at the planet. Oh, it's this guy. Interesting. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Does Armor Bane apply to your normal attack only, or any, any source of damage would gain Iron Bane? Is that true? What does it say? Attach a unit gains Armor Bane. Okay. Uh, let's find out what happens here. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to trigger this combat action to move this unit to an adjacent planet. OK. And then this says, after another unit moves, you can move this unit to that planet. Nice. I don't know if you have AOE or not. So it's kind of all in on this. Whatever, yeah, I mean, let's go. Uh, and then my first attack, if you're down for it. Yep. Um, should I just try to kill your warlord? Does he have a, no, that's a deploy action, so it really doesn't matter, does it? I don't know. I paid in it. I paid in it. Let's do three to uh, this rotting cor Uh We have a pre pre challenge action. Yeah, right? that's right. Sure. <laughs> Let's just try it. I'm gonna play a recycle. So discard two, mm -hmm. draw three. Okay. You out of money now? Yep. Oh wow. Okay. Now I can attack skis? Yep. Okay. Um, let's swing for three on uh, on that thing. The anthro bite. Or this guy. Let's swing for three on this guy. Biggie? Get that guy. Yeah, get him out of here. All right. Mine? Yours.
Who's the guy that does one to everything? He does two to everything that's exhausted. He can kneel to do that. My hope is that it will clear out all of your stuff that gets bonuses based on them being in the discard pile before they're in the discard pile. That would be good. Uh, let's do two to him. To that guy? Mm-hmm. I'm going to block it. Okay. Okay. Let's do five to your warlord. Well, let's reduce it to two. Woo, baby. Is that your signature? I think it is, isn't it? There aren't all the three signature cards or something? Maybe I don't not. know. All right, mine? Yep. Let's go one there. One there. Block it. With one. Okay. You have too many shields? Let's do two to everything that's exhausted. Is that everything, everything? Two to each exhausted enemy unit at the planet. And it is armor bane. No shields required. Applied. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> that's game. Yay! I thought I could cancel all of this. You're dead. Uh, he doesn't technically die. Dead. Uh, After all dead. that reading. For nothing. He's blooded. And then he takes two. Yeah. And then he's at one, two, <laughs> three. Plus three. All right, mine? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's go four to that thing. Four to that thing, you mm -hmm. say. I'm going to block three. Woof. Mobility. Take one. Okay. Um, and then uh, let's do two to this, or one to this guy. Here? Yeah. I'll block one. Okay. Stand and deliver? Yep. And then I get the first thing again? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, he's at four total? Yep. Okay. Um, let's do uh, let's do five to this thing. You got it. I'll do four to that thing. Block two. Let's do three to you. No shields. Mm. There it is again. <laughs> three. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> what are my cards worth if they don't do anything? How are you supposed to win if you never move your back row? <laughs> three to you. Hey, Dayton says that card doesn't get armor bane. Well, somebody told us differently on the chat earlier. It might be true. I believe it. That seems too strong. <laughs> AoE armor bane is insane. But I feel like I remember getting wrecked by that before. Ryan, what's the, I, I'm not confident the card that you think is in this deck is in this deck. <laughs> I built you this combo deck, but the one card that makes it all work is in there. <laughs> what's the name of the unit that I'm looking for? Well, wasn't this fun? Isn't this just a lesson in combo decks and how much, how much fun they are? That's why none of you guys out there should be playing them, so that players like me can have a good time. That's right. But maybe that didn't work at all, which it seems like that's becoming. The, the, it does not work on generic is, damage. Is there an expensive Eldar unit in here? In here? In the deck. 
Shrieking Exarch. That's what I said earlier, and he said that wasn't it. That's an expensive Elder unit. It's 100% it. It's the only one in here. What does it do? After an enemy unit is destroyed at this planet, draw a card and deal a damage to a target enemy unit. Doesn't seem that broken. Just more card draw, I guess. I don't know. You want to play a real uh, deck here? One more? If you could combo. I saw where I could like combo through a bunch of stuff. Because I like... And like, I basically get that direct damage, where I just direct damage you to death before we do anything. Okay, he says that is it. That's the combo. Every time a unit leaves, that triggers. That's not too bad. Draw a card, deal damage. So like, you could like cycle through a b so many cards off of that. Oh, uh, like actions where you take stuff off the board and. Like I had a bunch of like minus one HP to all the stuff, and it's like, and I draw see. and all that. Yep, I get it. Mm. But why would you right, really, right? Well, put this away. <laughs> Don't mind me. Back in the box you go. <laughs> All right, one more before we're done. One more. you got to play the Plague Father, right? You're yeah. a Chaos boy. And then should I play Black Mane or Kato? Who doesn't want to see Kato Sicarius? The most hated warlord of the entire game. Yep. Just I mean, it's talk fine. about vanilla ice cream. Kugath Plague Father is also not exactly. Um, He's supposed to be one of the best. Beloved. He's not the best. Reaction after this warlord is declared as an attacker, move a damage from this warlord to another unit on, at this planet. And then also, what does his banner do? Double it, right? Yes. Yeah. He moved to. He moved to. <sighs> he gets very hard to kill. Black Mane. Okay, everyone wants Black Mane. All right. Cool. Black Mane it is. I don't know that I've actually played Black Mane. Unfortunately, so like this whole like gruesome... Oh, he's a hunter. That's right. The gruesome chaos. Yeah, he's the... Uh, it's too gross, isn't it? It's too gross. I, I like the like fire and flame uh, Zarathur style. A slight amount of hellscape is acceptable. Yeah, but this it is just gross. too gross. But yeah. he, he was way better than the other one, I, I seem to remember. Yeah, Plague Father was way good. And wasn't it... Uh, there was... I remember some of those decks that... That we're just like, I can't beat this. You the the problem with Plague Father was you thought you were winning and then you lost. Yeah, every time. And then you just slowly see Apparently, yourself starting to lose. There's a lot of people that think he's the best. He's the best warlord? Yeah. Like he was him plus the Space Marines is the like okay. the deck. Because he can definitely uh, kill other warlords, and I guess the rest of the Space Marines can do everything else because that's what Space Marines do. They're the, everything. They're the Captain America of this game. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead and draw seven. I want to get these perfect. It's not going to happen, though. That's better. That's pretty nice, guys. I, I pulled that off pretty nice. What was everyone's favorite warlord when this was going on? My favorite was Kotez because, of course, it's like a strong tier two. I swear I can make it work. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, two. Sixteen. You want to go first, I guess? Sure. It'll be on your left. It's me. It'll, it'll be good. On your left, Cap. <laughs> on your left. You're Kith, Ryan playing Kith. Yeah, I remember Kith. Kith dropped all the chimeras, right? Wasn't that the whole idea? You just they drop were... chimeras everywhere and then you Well, win. they had the, the that dumb card. Colin likes Ragnar. War to finish. War. Nazdrag. Any of the orcs, yeah, for fry your chicken, that makes sense. I'm gonna mulligan. I remember, yeah, Ryan, cause he, cause Kith just had the the Clivex, the Clivex, right? Isn't that what that was? That Clivex warlord, I, I will never forget that. My favorite was Strachan, Destrio. I'm with you. I was almost always in on Strachan until Kotiaz came around. Yep, I remember that. He just buffed stuff. He was just playing fundies, right? He's playing uh, plus one to your soldiers, I think, as I remember. <laughs> we did this. Yeah, isn't that true, Destrio? War versus Strachan was actually a great example of development that went wrong, in my opinion. You can't have a warlord that can so easily replace the niche of a pre-existing warlord. Like, it's just, you just don't, ha just don't have another warlord that buffs units, right? You gotta have, if you wanna buff units, play Strachan. And if you want to do something else, play somebody else. Tobin, Clivex Warrior was stupid. Ryan went top eight at Kith at the Last Worlds. Okay. 
So after I commit to a planet with your warlord, I deal two to a target enemy unit at that planet. So I want to be where your warlord is ultimately. You want to guess where I'm going. But I also don't necessarily need to, because you know that I know that you know that I know that you know that I know. Decision making. Worthless. Wow. I think I'm going to try to get some Mexican food tonight. Do you ever crave Mexican food in the rain? I don't know what it is. I, I get it, actually. That's actually my, the name of my memoir. Mexican food in the rain? <laughs> I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put that down in case anything ever happens to you. That's going to be the title of the book. Give me those storm fajitas. Yeah, I know, Scott. If I see my uh, signature attachment with uh, Plague Father, you just keep it. Keep I didn't. It. Keep the hand, yeah. That's what we're saying, though. That signature card is so good. It's like it's almost silly. game over if you get it, and it's a regular game if you don't. I'm playing elites, man. I'm playing elites. This is the greatest day of my life. This is the elite off. After a unit is assigned, prevent all of it. Wow. I remember all these cards. You look at the Space Marine cards, and they're all great. Hey, do deep, deep Strike cards stay in play if you don't use them? I don't know what Deep Strike does. Does that kill my HQ stuff? It's Shadows. So you, oh. you pay to put one down, and then you can flip it up when a battle starts. It's right. more limited. Right, I remember that. Yeah. That was not too bad. It's not too bad. Ryan says yes. Stays in play. Great. And again, Ryan did build these decks, so mm -hmm. yeah, take it with a grain of salt. Top eight at many tournaments, from at least as so he says. Yeah. Fact checkers, please. Um, Zach, are you going to mulligan as I the already first did. player? You did. Yep. Way ahead of you. Okay, I'm going to keep this. It's not ideal, but it's fun. Yeah, Deep Strike Stay is there, right? Okay. So you go first. Let's start it off. All right, I'm going to play the STC Man. Fragment. It's limited. It's limit one relic per player. It's a relic. Interrupt. When you deploy an elite unit, exhaust the support to reduce the cost of that unit by two. She's got a giant hat on. Oh, my goodness. I'm playing the same thing, buddy. Lord, oh, Let's Lord. go. All right. Promise of glory. Put two cultist tokens into play at your HQ. Cultists are 1-1 one, one with an interrupt. When you deploy a demon unit, sacrifice this to reduce it by one. Oh, uh, you're going to be dropping big old dumb stuff. I'm going to be big tanks, and we're going to have a 40K off. This is how it's supposed to go. <laughs> okay. Everyone's excited that we both have fragments in play. Okay, so three... Alex saying, did either of you ever play the 40K miniatures game? We did not. We kind of just missed it. I was a little too young, and then there's no way I would have... Uh, just theme-wise, my parents would not have been pleased <laughs> with 40K. Uh, and then also just the hobby element. I, I, we were in a small town, so like we didn't really... Ha that wasn't a thing. Uh, so I kind of just missed the boat on that. Okay. We got to got to choose to choose here, don't you? It's a time for choosing. Um... Let's put a rogue trader over here where you won't care. Don't look over here. Nothing nothing to see. <laughs> Colin, that's awesome. God game. What's happening? All right, let's do. I love this, man. This really needs. It needs. It needs a. Uh, it needs something. One for a deep strike. You can only flip it up during combat at the beginning of a battle. So you're gonna put your warlord there. That's not at the planet. Do I have to pick the planet? Is it at a planet you deploy? I thought it was at a planet. Otherwise, it's busted. I don't think it's at a planet. You don't. You don't have to deep strike it to a specific planet, and then you decide to flip it up or not. God game. God game. <laughs> Pick, a, Pick planet. a planet. All right, let me back that up. I want to wait. Can you imagine? I thought it was just play it and wait. You're always trying to do things without any risk. You ever notice that? I, that's, what else are you supposed to do in life? <laughs> Good things, a little risk. How about that? All right. I like to maximize my risk. Let's play Kugas Nurglings. Oh, the Nurglings. Nurgle, Force. Nurgle, Nurgle. After your unit moves to this planet, deal it a damage. Okay, that's not a problem. It also, they move when they come from here. Just so you're from old HQ. Hey, 
How does everyone feel seeing Conquest back on the table, especially those uh, old school players? It's kind of great, right? It's it takes you great. right back. It's kind of great. We're really, we're literally throwing back. It's how it feels. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go here for a Black Moon Sentinel. I hate Space Marines. Sorry. What's his reaction? After my Warlord commits to a planet, I can move this unit to that planet. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's awesome, guys. Everyone love it. So great. It's the best. So happy to see it. Best game ever. Nerglings do damage to themselves. That's cool. Colin says that you're sucking me back in. I'm opening up my binders now. Welcome home. Fire Chicken, happy to run a Conquest side event in any worlds that you were present at. That's very nice. In 2024, assuming we're not all dead from some insane virus, all right. sounds like a great plan. <laughs> Deep strike there. <laughs> ah, pandemics are weird. You think this will be in the history books in like a, a a way that we don't appreciate right now? I think this will be top. This will definitely be uh, at least a good three to four paragraphs in most history books, if books even exist. Nice. <laughs> but it'll be a footnote in history, you know? It'll be there. SCC Fragment, let's throw their Land Raider on planet number one. It's mine. You gotta pay for it somehow? Can't take it. Pay you, three. You don't know me. You can't target, what does it say? Non-vehicle units you control at this planet cannot be targeted by enemy card abilities. Okay. So I can still punch you. You can punch this thing, for sure, it's you. You can put a big demon over there. Just do it already. I don't want to see it. Put that demon over there. Hmm. It's a time for choosing. Let's all get together and make a game with this system. We can't get the rise to 40k though. That's just a non-starter. So what do we put this in? I would absolutely lose my mind if there was a competitive Lord of the Rings game in this system. You play the Riders of Rohan, That'd they got all the mobility. Or the, the Nazgul. You play the Nazgul. Et cetera. Et cetera. Wizards. Wizards. Yeah, Gandalf as your Warcaster. I would never play that. I'd play like Faragorn or Bombadil. Bombadil Did you make Faramir and Aragorn? That's awesome. Yeah, Faragorn. Faragorn. <laughs> from downtown. That's my dream team. That's like my Raylo. It's like in the back of my <laughs> list. It's like, wait, what's a Faragorn? Faramir. The ants. Right. The ants would be fun. Get a little tree beard in there. Mm. Oh yeah, Twilight Imperium. That'd be cool. They should do that. Why didn't? Why not? Well, I know why they don't do it. Because none of these competitive LCGs really worked out. That's why. <laughs> Looking on the balance on the balance sheet. Well, maybe not again. Let's do this. I'm gonna use my uh, this thing mm -hmm. and these things. Oh my gosh! We're gonna so play a four? vicious bloodletter for one. Oh, I remember that thing. That reminds me of that thing in Spoils that was nuts. The remember uh, that Craghammer? No, it was the bloodletter that that did two at the beginning of every phase or something. It was in our splatter gun deck. It was just a direct damage to everything. Mm, I know. I think what it was you're called about. the bloodletter yeah. or something. Yeah. Where's it going though? Mm. I totally agree with you, Scott. Here. Conquest could be skinned anywhere, and it'd be great. Wow, why are you so into that planet? Is it because you control fewer units than me currently? What's going on here? I don't understand this. It's a trap. Area effect three. Wow. Wow. That guy's good. Okay. Wow. Area effect three is nuts, man. <laughs> The old blood Is letter. Is that considered an enemy card ability? No. Probably not, right? This would be a ability. Mm -hmm. Nurgle, Nurgle, Nurgle. <laughs> Nurgle, Nurgle, Nurgle. I'll pass. I'll also pass. I want two resources. Let's plan it this. Oh, man, this is weird. I don't know what to do here. And you can transfer damage from you to a thing if you're, if you're damaged. Mm -hmm. Do you just go to planet one and just win with that ability? Depends on what's in my hand. I think you do. I do three to you. You send one back to me. So you've got two on you. 
and I've got two on me. Then you do three to me, I'd be at five. I'd send mm -hmm. two over to you, you'd be at four, I'm at four. Then you'd technically kill me. But we got shields in different area codes. Yeah, so that, the shields matter. So where is your stuff gonna go? I can't really defend against your, your other stuff. I need to kill you with Black Man's ability. Although putting two on you at the start is kind of a non... Huh. Well, that's weird. You want to guess right, except for also you want to, like, be able to actually take me out on a turn. We got those drop pods. What's up? I know what's up. Drop pod assault coming at you. Picture this. Okay. Let's go... This is where, like, you know when people are good or bad, and I'm definitely not good at this. Uh, you ready? Mm -mm. Thanks a lot. All right, where are you going? I'm going to four. Two. So I can optionally move. I'm not going to. Um, all right, you ready for the command? You get too many command things. All right, command, draw a card. You. Command, draw a card, gain a resource. Gain two resources. Gain a card and a resource, because my warlord. Gain a card and a resource, plus one resource for rogue trader. Oh my gosh, you're, you've already lost. It's over. I Game's over. Rest. All right, battles. Yeah. First battle, you win it. I win it. Remove all damage from a target unit. Okay, it's done. Nailed it. You get the planet. Get the planet. This guy comes home. Battle here. Yeah. Do I get it? Oh, you take one damage too. This considered moving? I assume. Yeah, it probably is. Okay, um, I take, yes, the battle. The battle is good. The battle has happened. Okay, uh, so I win, and I get to either get three bucks or draw three cards. Yeah, you got to take those cards. Just take them. Oh, my word. Holy bazookas. Oh, and then I remove this, right. Okay, I got you. I see what you're saying. Then I remove it from this ability triggering. That makes sense. Question. If I trigger that battle ability, is this one I would play an after battle ability? Yeah. Can you trigger it again? No. I have gut and pillage. After I win a battle at a red planet, gain three resources. Oof. That's good. You did it. OK. No. Tobin says no. Wait, yeah. Tobin says yeah, and then no. Do you have to win the battle? OK, so you win the battle, and then there's triggers, and then you resolve probably winning the battle. That's how games work like this sometimes. It is too late. Everybody All right. says it's too late. Not playing it. OK, good to know, though. I'll defend those red planets with my soul. Over here, I've got initiative. Two to the Nurgle. That's probably worth it. Did you take a damage from moving? Yeah, but then I healed it with this ability. Boo. <laughs> Let's shield one of it. Done. Oh, that card I can't play for a whole round. <laughs> then I'll punch you for two. Uh, yep, it's good. All right, end of round. Ready? Ready. You get the re option to retreat. Not I, I go first, actually. I'm retreating. Okay. I want out. Move a non-warlord unit you control to a planet of your choice. Do we just go for it? What's my best path to victory here, you know? I've got a red. I can go red. Then it's blue-green. 
I've got a blue, so like we would stuff it until this planet unless I win this one. Yep. Sure. Let's win this one. You got it. He's technically back here. End of the turn? End of turn. Draw two, gain four. Draw two. Gain four. What in the world? <laughs> I like the big stuff. See, this is cool. This is what the game needed, and it just got there right as it got canceled. Good morning, David Whitfield. How does this exist? Uh oh. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Are you ready? Mm hmm. And I'm the first player. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, there's a lot of things. Okay, um, two there. My elites are immune to enemy events. Have at me, have at that. Oh, we get another planet. Oh, yeah. That might affect things. Wee, wee, wee. You have a planet? Yep. Uh, from the top rope. It's Yavarn, everybody's favorite planet. It's a beautiful planet. All right, mine? Yeah. Play one for the Plague Father's banner. What does that do? Plus oh, one no. HP, I can move two damage every time he moves it. Yeah, that's... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Nurgle, you mean. Isn't that, like, unstoppable now? Mm -mm. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's do a uh, let's do a Tarox here. People are overestimating it. Overestimating what? Me. I said, "Yep, it's over." <laughs> Not the case. Um. It's so funny. Everyone's like, it's over. <laughs> That's not a good sign for a game. Come on. Come on. I'm going to kill that Nurgle. I mean, this seems like the play. Let's just do it. Reduced by two, we're going to play a Black Legion Helldrake. Eight cost, flying. You better have an answer. Hmm. That's a lot of damage. Does AoE hit only me? Yeah. yeah. Enemies only. And you've got a, a... Hey, how are you there, too? Okay. Um... <laughs> Ryan says, boom! I was considering other options, but that just seemed all right. All right, well, um, have a space full predator on planet number one. Get old Plague Man out of here. Apparently your land raider prevents my AOE from hitting the Vostrian officer. So Good. That's what we like. Ah, so I can't commit my Warlord there. That's right. That seems bad. Yeah, I think that card was banned eventually or something. Unbelievable. Or maybe good. it was supposed to be. All right. Uh, I'll pass. Pass. Okay. Let me think about my life here. Command is not up for debate there. So where would I put it? Where would you go? This is dangerous for both of us. Putting our union into play mm. for free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're all we're playing big dads. <laughs> okay, so do I go? Okay.
Where are you going to go, man? That's the question. Where are you going to go? I feel like you're ahead here. Yes. So just don't miss. Don't miss. Don't get too fancy, right? Find these. Don't get too fancy. Okay, then. Let's do... Um... Marin says Lander does not protect against area attack. Yeah, it's funny how we none of us actually know the He's rules. quoting something. Oh, there's quotes. That makes it official. Yeah, that definitely makes it All official. All right, where are you going? Okay, that actually, hold on, that changes things. Uh, that means I'm going... Here. Yeah, I'm going here. Okay. Going to three. Four. They're going to roll. They're going to roll. All right, command. I only have three here. I've got it. Card. Money. You have one here, two money. Two money. Warlord here, card to money. Card. My warlord here, money. I gain a card to money. Okay. Uh, battle. <clears throat> yeah. Nurgling's trigger. After a unit moves to that planet, deal it one damage. So does it deal damage to itself? Mm hmm. I remember that. Definitely. Okay. And then we have more and rules coming. My Kuga. Dayton says. Dayton says, I have the rules reference. It says, this damage is considered to be dealt by a card effect. So, this says, non-vehicles cannot be targeted by enemy card abilities, but I think the thing is AOE isn't targeting anything. It's not anything. targeting anything. Yeah, so it doesn't work at all. Okay. We did the, we did the command stuff, right? Yeah, you're, you're, uh, let, right. me, let so me just do this. Am I going to do this thing? You got one money, it can't be too bad. Um, what's his ability say? Each elite unit is immune to enemy events. Doesn't much matter. And you're not going to attack them first. But just in case, uh, I'll pay one for the prince's might. After you deep strike this event, demon units of this planet cannot be damaged by units of printing cost two or lower until the end of phase. Oh. Okay. It's a little protection. Just a little protection. I get first attack. We got actions first. Uh-huh. First action. <laughs> read, 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 scan, pass. Okay, I'll pass. All right, let's do five to AOE, man. Oh, blood letter? Yeah. I'll block two of it. I have a response. Okay. God, that's the worst. After I damage an immune unit, deal one unpreventable to it. You got it. <laughs> I remember that card. I hate this card so much. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's Space Marine Zach. This is going to be so devastating. Yeah. Uh, let's do eight to this guy. <laughs> Indomitable, prevent it all. Oh my god. <laughs> Space Marines can suck an egg. <laughs> it's the worst. That's actually worse than combo. And it's worse than burn. It's just playing the game better than you can possibly play it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Space Marines players, come on. Uh, <laughs> three to you. Divided by two. Divided by two. Do we round up or down? I assume it's up. I'm just going to go up. <laughs> Is it worse for me? Up. <laughs> All right. Take one. Take one. I'll round it up for you. Oh, I, I can't take it because of my card I played. He costs two or less. Oh, yeah, that's right. So you don't do, take anything Nothing from, two from or him less. for the round. Oh, okay. For the round, the entire round. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Salute. <laughs> Ready? Aim. Go ahead. <laughs> got a drop pod? You don't want a drop pod there? Five. Divided by two, so I'll take three. Am I good to go? Mm hmm. I'll hit eight for the same guy. Indomitable. 
<clears throat> Ryan saying retreat. No, <clears throat> never. Uh, three. <laughs> Takes two. Take two. The space marines were so busted. And then uh, you get to do nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Ready. Retreat. You get the planet. Isn't this fun? <laughs> Don't you love when vanilla ice cream is the best vanilla ever? <laughs> it's, it's like the vanilla ice cream that just dunks on you. <laughs> I went into the gelato store and all they had was vanilla. And you didn't even play the... Uh... I didn't play drop pod. Drop pod. All right, they're gone. All right, we go here and battle here, technically. Move an omelet to a planet of your choice. How good is that for you? Oh, I can't deploy this thing. It wouldn't trigger the because it's after you deploy it is when it and when it fires. So since I'm not deploying it, the thing wouldn't fire. Um, let's put it there regardless. Okay. Uh, I guess it's still tapped there. And then he comes home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Battle here. Yep. I have initiative because I'm the warlord. You got it. I'll attack you. Dealing damage. Oh, yeah. I could just I move declare... the That's not bad, yeah. That's fine. That's fine. It's gone. Yeah. Dead. Dead. Uh, <laughs> then deal one damage to each enemy unit at target HQ or adjacent planet. So we'll do HQ. Okay. I did damage. <laughs> I did damage. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> This is ridiculous. All right, gain money, draw cards, and let's let's have you vanquish me. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I can't have more indomitables, right? You can have one more. <laughs> sure enough. Okay. So. I have two reds, Ryan, and I'm going for the third one here. Let's just be honest about it. Okay, my go. Here go. My go. Me go. I've got six money. Let's play the old... Uh... Do we get a new planet or is it done? We've, we've already one, moved. One more planet. Moved two, yeah. Should be seven total. This one, dude. That is Karnath. Trigger the battle ability of any planet. That's a good one. Scott says, Zach, just draw three cards and win. This is from him. <laughs> one on the Void Pirate. There, the. All right, let's go two on a Chaos Fanatic. Ah. Denied. This is this is actually what is going to make us remember the things that we hated the most about Conquest. I'm gonna drop another Space Wolves. On the uh, first planet there. So I can't commit my warlord there. So you can't there. commit your warlord there, you know? Because that's fun, right? <laughs> Let's just say no. <laughs> All right. What the heck? This isn't well, right. I'm going to play a uh, splintered path acolyte over here. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Go, your turn. <laughs> you can't just say mm. no in games like this. When will people realize? You can't just take it off the table. Pay one to commit. Pay two to commit. Take three damage to commit. Ah. Uh, now the predator's not unique. It's not unique. I, I, if you can believe it. Like, think about that. <laughs> if you had three, you could literally go three on the planets that matter, and your warlord just can't participate. Just can't go. No, it just can't happen. This is why space marines are awful. Pass. But uh, from what I'm told, this feels a lot like 40k. Okay. Which is like, sometimes it's just miserable. But that's... <laughs> Second game was miserable. But, am Third I wrong, game was though? miserable. Like, yeah. Actually, if you play 40k, I want to know. I feel like that's actually part of the game. But which is like that's not feeling miserable. Isn't part of a game. Have that, you read 40k? But well, you shouldn't. But game games shouldn't feel miserable ever. I mean, I think that's a fair thing to. That's a fair principle to base a game around, right? Try to prevent all misery. Otherwise, what's the point? I mean, nobody plays Monopoly and says, "Ah, yeah, the point of the game is to feel miserable and hate everybody." I mean. Nobody wants to play it for that reason, right? Well, I'll pass. <laughs> John Miller, 40K is absolutely miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass. All right, we're passed. I'll take mm -hmm. my money. Two money on Farron. Oh, wait, we got to commit. Oh, wait, I know you can't go there, so I just took it ahead of time. <laughs> Let's just, uh, you know, go to the fourth planet. I'm going to one. Yeah, really? <laughs> 
This is ridiculous. See, this is misery that comes from a non-combo deck, but it's an imbalance. Like, these cards are too good. There's a lot of ways to make a game miserable. <laughs> we found that out over the years. And basically, if you make a game fun for 5% of people, it's, it's generally miserable for at least 25% of people. Is that, reason, is that true? 5% of combo players have a great time, but then 25% of your player base hates playing against a combo deck. That's how I feel about Mill, same thing. 5% of Space Marines players have a great time, 25% hate playing against Space Marines now. Or 80%. Or 80%, maybe 90, maybe 100. Uh, where is it at? Fire Chicken says, since the opponent can't go to that planet, they should have been building units, shouldn't, should have been building units here. That's great, except for he played it this turn. So like, there's no way for me to know I'm gonna lose both the first two planets. And also, then he's going to drop a seven cost where I can't yeah, go. Yeah, why didn't why didn't you anticipate the double like, space wolves predator? Come on, get good, Zach. All right, I'm going to take my money. <laughs> Scott Armstrong says it's not enough that I should win. My opponent <laughs> should also have a bad time while losing. All right, you got the other commandies. Uh, two Pass. money, three <laughs> three money. Just win. <laughs> three money in the card. <laughs> you don't have one a weird like you know event. Let's just see what I get. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Eric Sorensen has the right of it here on 40k. It's the problem that it's the all stuff goes on one side and then all stuff goes on the other side. So, like, if all stuff going on your opponent's turn is wrecking you, then by the time it comes around to you to actually go, half your army is already gone. Yeah. So, like, it's impossible. It's miserable indeed. All right, do I win? Yeah, oh, definitely. You got any weird right. stuff? Do I have anything that can take out your <laughs> two elite units, your warlord, and your three other dudes? Call for that exterminatus, man. It's time. Or whatever dragon chaos variant of it that you have. That's not how, that's not how chaos runs. You got two backlash to cancel elite events. I mean, it's cool. It's elite deck. I that's get it. it. This, so, Space Wolves Predator, by the way, just, I, I've had this, we've been having this discussion, Zach, for a thousand years. King Robert's host and Game of Thrones first edition did the same thing. Cersei Lannister and Game of Thrones first edition did the same thing. Uh, what else has done it in the past? Did Destiny ever deal, deal with it in the cannot, opponent cannot do basic fundamentals that they might build their deck around? I don't, I don't think so. So anytime a the, game says... <laughs> Destiny did the you can loop the hyperspace jump and your opponent never gets to go. Yeah, that's a, that's a content problem. Yeah. That's a balance problem for sure. Uh, I don't think you ever print cards, ever, that take away a fundamental framework of a game. Ever. King Robert's host said, you can't do power challenges while it's out. No, don't ever do that. Just and don't ever do power that. Power challenge is literally how you win the game. Also, what if I just built my entire deck around power challenges? And it's like, oh, well, yeah, actually, it doesn't work anymore. Same thing with Cersei. She said, you can't do intrigue challenges against me. And it's like, but what if I'm running an intrigue challenge deck? Like, that's, it's such a fundamental part of the game, you can't just turn it off. Now you could say lose a power to do an entry challenge. You could say you have to you get minus one during entry challenges. You could say you've got to pay me a gold to do an entry challenge. You can make it costly. You just a can't. A million ways. Just don't say, say no. You can't say don't do this. Like Space Wolf Predator should absolutely say for the warlord to commit there, take three damage. Yeah. Because it's shooting at you while you come to the planet. It seems like it seems pretty obvious. Don't ever say no in these kinds of games like this. It's just like role playing. Wait, you know, you ever had a DM that's just like, I want to go over there and do the thing that I have fun doing, and they're like, no, you can't do it. That's not my kind of DM. It's not, that's a bad DM, it's a bad game mechanic, it's a bad card design, whatever it is, I, I truly, I will die on this hill, I'll write a thesis about it if we need, if we need to go that far. Yeah, it's, anyway. It's, it's not great, but you can see the like. The design of the game's phenomenal. The design of what's going on here is great. It's absolutely a phenomenal game. And it borrows more from the Star Wars CCG and Lord of the Rings TCGs than I thought. Now that you've actually recently hit it. The yeah. locations and whatnot, yeah. It, it, actually seeing the locations on the map really makes me appreciate it. Awesome. Th you guys are, thanks for the, the kind words. Yeah, hey, thanks, thanks so for much for being here. Also, Ryan. Fire Chicken, I, I've seen your stuff. I mean, I, I know that you were big into uh, uh, Conquest. It's great to reconnect. Tobin, it's great to see you again on the, the Warcast and the Battlecast and, and all of that. I remember you had the cast going for such a long time. Um, <laughs> what we've learned today is Stephen hates Eric Lang. <laughs> that is not at all true. I actually love Eric Lang. We have some great conversations. But mechanically, I don't... I think the game mechanically is functioning well. I think a lot of the content... And this is universal. It's not like it's not like oh, the content in Fort in Warhammer Conquest is special. Because like that scenario where like you have two planets early and a winning planet that I can't just, just can't go to, and I don't have any units on it. That just shouldn't be possible. Like, that doesn't. The thing about it, that's not gonna happen every time you draw that card. No. It's seven cost, so you have to be able to play it. Uh, and 
technically, like, there's a lot of stuff. Like, you can the better you get at the game, the more you can mitigate that. Sure. But there's also, like, the possibility. It reminds me of earlier games. Like, we were playing the Lord of the Rings TCG. You, on the first turn, advanced a little quickly, and I just killed you. Yeah. And it's like, that can happen? Yeah. Like, we haven't even started the game, and you just murdered me? Yeah. I feel like this also allows for, if turn one just doesn't quite go your way, mm -hmm. your opponent gets the planet and gets two or three resources and two or three cards, and you don't. That's kind of the end. Yeah, the fact that... that people, Especially if they're even. People saw me play the banner, and they were like, ah, it's over. It's like there are cards that just end if your opponent doesn't have something as ridiculous as you do. Which I happen to have. Yeah. Yeah, that, but, you know, saying that, like, here's the thing. An oppressive combo or, like, a, a devastatingly imbalanced combo that happens one out of every 20 games if you and that makes it okay is not... That's not true. If you hadn't had two cancel eight damage cards... Yeah. ...as well... Yep. ...like... That, once I get him off the... Hey, Space Marines, man. But I'm saying, you had that, plus that's what created that scenario. Right. It, let's say it happens 1 in 50. Not good. It, should, it just shouldn't happen. I yeah. mean, I was... So, if you can get your Warlord there, maybe it changes the game. It probably doesn't. But at least you feel like you had some agency in the decision for how you wanted to try to turn the game around. Telling an opponent completely no on such a basic framework of this game, I don't like it. I don't think it should happen. And I don't know that that's a Lang thing. I don't know that's an Eric thing. Anyway, I'll write the thesis and we can talk about it. I'll send it around. That's right. We'll publish it in the journals. Get a peer review going. Um, all right, so as we were saying, thank you, everybody. This is a blast. It's so much fun. The game is well-designed. The system is great. I would love to see any number of IPs in this On the system. Time, type of system. I think you could clean it up a little bit, probably, and it would be great. Um, but, but the thing is, I wouldn't... There's not a mechanical cleanup for me. There's not a lot to be done. Maybe no. the card draw thing we were talking about earlier. Like every time you win, you draw at least one card. Okay. Or just draw more at the end. Yeah. Or just some other some other basic way of like getting cards. Mm -hmm. um, but mechanics is not where I'm comp most complaining, right? A lot of games, like we look at the old 90s and 2000s games, the weight of the games comes mechanically. Mm -hmm. Less about like card brokenness. Right. Uh, whereas this is just like some of these cards are, there's a curve of power level and some of That's them are really way true. over here. That's really true, actually. So the, the more modern stuff, the problem, the games are usually pretty streamlined and good. And that where, is where it becomes obvious when the content itself mm -hmm. is skewed one direction or another. The old games are so complex and confusing in the games themselves that you don't have time to actually decide if this is too strong of a card or not. <laughs> It's like, well, I'm just trying to influence you. I don't know. we got to consult yeah. the manual. Get the abacus out. That's totally. awesome. You guys are great. I appreciate you guys being here. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow. We'll play some Arkham. And if you're here for Warhammer uh, Conquest, and, you know, we're not going to play Conquest again. Probably not, at least anytime soon. But You know what's funny? Hop on the stream with us anyway. Come on back on Friday. Check out Arkham. It's fun. It's a great game to follow along to. We can More chat throwbacks. about stuff. We'll, we'll talk about whatever we want. Whatever questions you guys have, we'll, we'll have a good time. One thing that's funny, I went and one of the videos I clicked on for a second was the last Conquest gameplay video we posted. And yeah. it was the final World Championship when we knew the game was ending. And it was you and Robert doing the commentary. Oh, goodness. But your literal first statement is basically like, welcome to prob to not not probably you're like I would put good money on this being the last game of conquest and I was wrong. ever on our channel and so I was wrong even though miracles uh, do exist it's unlikely that we revisit this often it's possible we do throwback Thursdays every Thursday right now five days a week of streaming so if you're really gonna hang out and chat we chat just like we chatted while we were playing today while we're playing games all week long. And it's a really good time. The, the people hanging out in the chat and part of this community are incredible. So It's just good to connect, too. This is totally. what we've got for now, so we may as well take advantage of it. I'm going to go turn off the, uh, the technical stuff. And I'm going to spin the style. Zach's going to talk to you guys. Spin us out. All right, well, hey, really, it was great. This was fun, even though I lost, I think, every game. Uh, I talked to Eric, too. Huge shout-out to Eric Lang for creating some really good times and memories <laughs> for us. Uh, this game was super fun. You can still find it around. It's not, it's not one of those older games. It's not old enough yet that it's like now super expensive. So if you want to check it out, you can. We'll be back tomorrow with Arkham next week with a full, full five days of streaming. So stay tuned and be safe. We'll catch you guys tomorrow.